Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto awaken with power of demon katana? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Okay. Well this is going to be my first shot at a Naruto FIC, so go easy. It's going to be Naruto 1010 for sure possibly adding Tamari in eventually. I will try to have jutsu names in Japanese but beyond that I cannot be sure. I am sorry but I don't feel comfortable with normal speech or using the suffixes for the most part. Also 1010 will be an orphan but not because of Kayubi. Majorly O and most likely Uk. Konoha. Night of the Kayubi assault, hold it off until the Yandaimi arrives. A ninja screamed as the Kayubi no Kitsune began to attack once again. The brave men and women of the Konoha tried to defend their home but it was to no use it tore through slaying people in a furious attack as if driven by some force to make it this angry. Irashi Kazama, the Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha arrived soon after, he was a powerful and respected ninja. Damn. I'm in the office for a whole of three days and this happens, I hope you forgive me son, I know you mother want when I see her again. He said to the bundle within his arms. Then he turned to the Kayubi and spoke once more. Kayubi, I know not what was angered you but I cannot allow you to kill anymore. With that Arashi began to make hand seals. Foolish mortal you cannot defeat me, I will have my vengeance. The Kitsune bellowed out and charged at him. Hake no Fuin Shaki, he called out. In this moment the Kayubi was sealed into the firstborn and only son of the Arashi, he was to be called Uzumaki Naruto for the sake of keeping him safe. Take care, my son. Arashi said as he died. A figure came from the side and took the boy from his now dead father, then left reporting the Yandaimi dead and taking his son to be raised with a family that didn't blame him. He was known as the Sandame Hokage. Irashi, I will not let your death be in vain. The old man softly spoke to his fallen successor. He handed Naruto to a man in a ragged ninja uniform. Take care of him, when he gets older send him to me for his clan scrolls. Yes, Lord Hokage. With that the man left returning to his wife and year old daughter. Time skip 12 years, Naruto, where are you going? Asked a girl with her brown hair, and brown eyes. Where else 1010, ramen, he screamed at the top of his lungs. You better not fail the exam tomorrow, Naruto. I did not wait a year to have you blow it do you hear me? Yea I hear ya, but trust me I can do it. Right, like the time you claimed you could fix stuff in the apartment. I don't know what the Sandame was thinking sending both of us to live in that dump after my parents died. Hey, how I was I supposed to know if that toaster would explode, he yelled. See my point. Whatever. With that the two friends walked to the ramen stand and somehow Naruto managed to down 12 bowls of ramen. How do you do that you spend almost a third of our money on ramen, Ten Ten fumed. I'm sorry. Naruto said looking sad, I'm just hungry. She sighed, it's all right Naruto, it's just so hard sometimes. I know 1010 I miss them too. With that the two walked home to the small apartment they lived in. Naruto sighed, I wish we could move to my clan home. I know Naruto, but with the villagers believing you are Kayubi because he is sealed in you it's hard right now. 1010 told him. Bastards, I swear no one but you and the old man care. Yay. Well I learned the truth from my parents in the Sandame when I was little. I learned all of it and understand it. I know. With that they entered into the house, changed into their night clothes and went to bed awaiting the day to come. Next day Iruka had the class start with weapons which Naruto and Ten Ten both aced you to the fact Ten Ten was a weapon specialist and they trained together. Naruto favored ninjutsu and taijutsu, but was barely passable in genjutsu. Naruto, with much effort managed to make the clones successfully and they both passed the test. Yay. Naruto we did it. Ten Ten exclaimed happily. Yea we did. I gotta go meet old man Hokage though, said he wanted to talk to me if I passed. Naruto said as he turned to leave. Hang on I'm coming too. Sorry Ten Ten he wanted me alone this time. Ah, please? She replied pouting a little. Later in the Hokage's office. Naruto I thought I told you to come alone. Sandame told the boy. Hee hee, about that, Ten Ten won that argument he said nervously scratching the back of his head. Oh well she would have found out later on. Here these are for you. 
he said producing several large scrolls. They contain you family jutsus as well as information on you bloodline, which allows you to move at extreme speeds. To activate it you must learn the Hiraishin no jutsu, and use it once awakening your Hiraishin bloodline. Yes I finally have my own bloodline, take that Sasuke you bastard, Naruto said while dancing around the office. Don't let anyone see these scrolls other than 1010, Naruto. One of them, is the forbidden scroll which was in all honesty your father's. Finally I have a present for each of you due to your performance today. I saw how you spared once before and noticed you might like these. Sandame reached under his desk and came up with two katanas about three to four feet in length and several sets of kanai, one of which was the infamous three-pronged kanai. Naruto the three-pronged kanai are a clan symbol of the Kazama be careful with them. Also the katana in the black sheath is yours. You can channel chakra through it to make the blade wider or longer depending on your choice, the blade is infused with chakra so it's unbreakable. Sweet thanks old man. 1010, these kanai are for you. The blue katana is yours, it has the same properties as Naruto's blade, I trust both of you with these. Thank you, Sandame. 1010 politely told the old Hokage. The two then left the Hokage's office with their new weapons attached to their belts. Hey Naruto, who do you think we'll get for a sensei? Not sure, I don't care as long as it's not that bushy browed freak. Naruto, it's not nice to talk about guy like that. Well he is freaky. Point taken, the two arrived home again and sat down eating a normal meal of fish and rice, thanks to 1010 forcing Naruto to eat something other than ramen most days. Naruto now sat trying to master a jutsu from his family scrolls. Naruto, just relax and forces on what seems natural. If it's a clan bloodline you should be able to do it if you relax and think about it. Naruto had for the last half hour had been making a total fool of himself trying to learn the Hiraishin. Okay 1010. With that he began to make seals again. Hiraishin no jutsu, he said. That he looked around and for him time seemed to have slowed down almost. Slowly it dawned on him that time hadn't slowed down, he was just moving so fast it seemed to. To test out this theory he ran to the Hokage's office, which took little time at all. He then took the Hokage's hat and ran away back to his apartment. All the poor Sandame saw was a yellow flash. Irashi you bastard. Even in death you come back to steal my hat. He then stopped at his apartment, finding a confused 1010 who didn't understand why Naruto had vanished and a yellow flash had taken off instead of him. 1010 I did it, I used to hear Aishin, he declared triumphantly. She smiled as it dawned on her that he was the Flash, so how was it? I stole the old man's hat as proof. She hit him over the head, you idiot why did you do that? To see if it worked or not. Oh I see, well make sure you give it back him. Maybe later, I'm exhausted right now that took a lot out of me. Okay. Naruto let's get you to bed. With that the two went inside and went to sleep but during that night a thunderstorm started and 1010 was afraid of the storms a fact she wasn't proud of. I can face down being a ninja but I'm afraid of a simple storm, I hope Naruto doesn't mind. 1010 thought as she walked over to Naruto's room and entered it. Naruto are you awake? 1010 asked, yay. Came the sleepy reply. Can I stay over here tonight? Storms bugging you huh? Sure. With that 1010 got into Naruto's bed and laid down. Sorry for bugging you. Don't worry about it. Next day. Oh my god, Naruto we are going to be late. 1010 yelled at Naruto as the two downed a breakfast at record speed. No, we aren't 1010. What do you mean? With that Naruto picked her up. Hey put me down I don't need carried. Yes you do I'm going to try using the Hiraishin. Good luck, she then wrapped her arms around him for support and he took off. They made it to the academy in record time, all the while scaring the villages by making them believe that Yellow Flash had returned from the dead. Aruka announced the teams. Team 8 will be Uzumaki Naruto, 1010, and Uchiha Sasuke. Sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi. Oh man I'm the same team as the bastard, Naruto groaned. At least we are on the same team, yay. Hour and a half later. Where is he? Naruto asked clearly bored. I don't know, 1010 said. Just then a silver haired man entered into the room. Naruto being as bored as he was Hiraishin over to him and pantsed him for revenge. My first opinion of you, is I hate you. Meet me on the roof, Kakashi said in a lazy tone. 
The group got up on the roof and sat down then were told to explain their likes, dislikes and goals. Why don't you start Sensei? Ten Ten asked, very well. I am Hitaki Kakashi my like and dislikes are none of your business and my goals are mine. Now you girly. My name is Ten Ten. My likes are weapons and my best friend. My dislikes are people that are stuck up, and those that abuse Naruto over what they think he is, my goal is to be a great kunoichi like Tsunade. She knows about the Kayubi huh? Kakashi thought, next you blondie. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, my likes are ramen, my friends, and training. My dislikes are the time it takes ramen to cook, stuck up people that think I am something else, and Sasuke. My goal is to become Hokage. Finally Uchiha. My name is Sasuke Uchiha, my likes are training. My dislikes is a certain man and weak ninjas. My goal is to kill a certain man and revive my clan. Great an Avenger. Kakashi thought, well you have test to become Genins it starts tomorrow at 10. Meet me at training ground 7. By the way this test has a 66% chance of failing so don't eat anything tomorrow. What? Was the collective response of the three ninjas. You heard me, good luck. With that he left and the group parted. Naruto started training on jutsus in the Forbidden Scroll Learning 2, and Ten Ten sharpened her kanai and practiced for the next day before they went to bed. Leave a review this is my first attempt at this so go easy, constructive criticism welcomed but flames will be ignored. So I see no one chickened out. Kakashi said to the three genins in front of him. Your goal for this exercise is to get these bells off me. With that he held up two bells. But sensei there are only two, but three of us, Ten Ten said. Correct if you manage to get the bells two of our pass, but one will fail and be sent back to the academy. You have two hours to get them. Good luck. With that Kakashi leapt to the other side of the field and the three genins ran for cover. Naruto. How are we supposed to get the bells off a junin? Ten Ten asked. Dunno. Any ideas? Well head on without any idea of what we are going well just get us knocked out. Yay, hum maybe, at this point Sasuke leapt forward not trusting Naruto and Ten Ten to get the bells. He activated the Sharingan and began to form hand seals then called out, Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu. Sending a huge ball flame from his mouth towards Kakashi, it seemed to impact him and for just a second it seemed as thought Sasuke had gotten the Junin when he simply turning into a stump which burned into ash. Damn it, he used Kawarimi no Jutsu to avoid my attack, but then where is he? He was cut out of his thoughts by Kakashi's voice, Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu. And he was pulled into the earth until only his head was visible. One down, two to go. Kakashi thought. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto's voice was heard. Kakashi saw five yellow flashes run across and to his right side then stop and draw shuriken. It's over Kakashi Sensei. Said Ten Ten she was in front of him with Naruto now both had shuriken drawn. He realized to his horror that he had four Naruto's plus ten ten in front of him and five Naruto's on each side. Though without warning they all tossed a shuriken, made seals and called out, Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. He suddenly had about two hundred shurikens flying at him, and no time for a Kawarimi. Oh shit, this is going to hurt, was all Kakashi said and he attempted to dodge and ran straight at Naruto and ten ten but unfortunately for the copy nin several shuriken had gotten to his legs, slowing him down. Also both had unsheathed their katanas and looked ready to strike. Ten Ten charged straight at the wounded Nin with her sword drawn. Kakashi parried the blow with a kanai so it began a duel between the weapon's mistress and the wounded Junin. Kakashi became so wrapped up between his wounds and Ten Ten's attacks he didn't realize Naruto had slipped around behind him until, he had was kicked in the back sending him to the ground as he attempted to get up he found a katana and his neck the other in a very important place. Ten Ten then very carefully took the bells with one hand, not wavering from her sword position threatening to castrate Kakashi if he tried anything. Well it looks like this test is over, Naruto said. Yay, looks like it. Ten Ten agreed. Damn who are these two? Kakashi thought. Very well. Sasuke you failed to get a bell therefore I should fail you, but this test was just to gauge your skills so you all pass. Ten Ten, Naruto, you may go home but I wish to talk to you Sasuke. We meet at the bridge tomorrow at 8, Kakashi said. Come on Naruto, we can go get something to eat, Ten Ten said. After the two had left Kakashi turned to Sasuke. What the hell was that? You showed no effort to help your team, you felt you're the best and those two are obviously more capable than you thought. 
You need to get it into your head you are the best man or woman on this team Sasuke, you are not the team. Everyone is the team do you understand me? I should fail you just because actions like that in the field of battle will not be tolerated. Your team is like family am I clear? Yes sensei. What a prick, I am the best. Sasuke thought. Good you can go home now. Kakashi said, then pulled out his orange book, and began to read. Naruto. I swear you're going to eat us out of house and home. Ten Ten muttered and Naruto helped himself to his third sitting of dinner. Oh come on Ten Ten we used a lot of energy today, and I still have to train on my family scrolls. Naruto told her. Okay. But still you keep eating like that you're going to turn into something so big I'll have to get a new room put in just to hold you. She joked. Ha ha. Very funny. Naruto grumbled then opened up his scroll and began reading on the Hiraishin and various aspects of his clan jutsus and other ones. Ten Ten just pulled out her katana and began to polish it. Time lapse. Team 7 had just completed its 15th D rank mission and was getting fed up with going yard work and catching the cats of the town. Old man give us a decent mission will ya we are way better than this. Naruto said to Sandame. Naruto show some respect you have to work your way up the ladder like everyone else. Aruka yelled at him. Actually we need a team to escort a bridge builder to wave country. Do you accept? Sandame said to which he received four yes. Good, send Mr. Tazuna in will you? With that a man looking rough and also semi-drunken as he walked in and took a large pull from a bottle of sake. This is the ninja that will accompany me. They look like weaklings especially the one in orange. At this 1010 had to restrain Naruto from killing Tazuna. Naruto do not kill the client. We leave in one hour go and pack, Kakashi said. An hour later found Team 7 leaving Konoha on the road for a collision with fate. The trip was uneventful but within several miles of wave there was a random puddle, then as the team passed it two men leap out and attack the group with a chain bladed weapon. The genin were taken by surprise and out of instinct Naruto and Ten Ten were side by side with their katanas drawn. The struck at Kakashi who was beside a tree but he dodged it and threw a kanai through one of the chains. Effectively stopping the chain in its place, out of shock the two didn't have time to react and wrap themselves around the trunk of the tree with their own weapon both nins, the infamous demon brothers died by their own blade. Mr. Tizuna would you care to explain why there are enemy nins after you? Kakashi asked. I guess I'd better come clean. A man named Gado has been pumping wave dry he won't let the bridge be completed because it would simply ruin his shipping business. He hired some mercenaries and missing nins to aid him. All my village could afford was the payment equal to AC rank mission. Tizuna confessed. Kakashi sensei what does that mean for us? Ten Ten asked. We press forward with the mission but be careful everyone and, duck. Kakashi yelled as a huge sword came sailing towards them. Well, done but I'd expect nothing less from Sharingan Kakashi, the man said. Momochi Zabuza, don't attack him anyone, he is a missing nin, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Naruto and Ten Ten moved slightly closer together and shakily held their swords, while Sasuke moved in front of Tizuna. Kakashi and Zabuza began to duel kanai to kanai then they moved from dry land onto the water, during the fight Kakashi moved his headband revealing his Sharingan eye. Zabuza began to make hand seals, Kakashi began to use to the exact same ones much to Zabuza's dismay then called out, Sweden. Debakafu no Jutsu. A massive pillar of water slammed into Zabuza then as he seemed to be ready to fight again a needle came and struck him in the neck, he fell apparently dead. A hunter nin, that appeared to be from mist appeared moments later and took Zabuza. I thank you for your help. Then he vanished. The team continued on its goal headed towards Tizuna's village. They arrived within several hours. Tizuna's daughter was a kind woman and his grandson named Inari was a really brat to the team, constantly saying they were wasting their time and would die. The day after the team arrived in wave, Kakashi had them begin to practice the tree climbing exercise which everyone got quickly, only trouble being when Naruto got too busy celebrating and fell from the tree onto his head. Ten Ten and Kakashi were asking him if he was alright but the eternal bastard Sasuke didn't even care for his pain. After three days of being there the bridge was almost complete and Inari was really after the team and Naruto snapped on the young boy, Inari shut the hell up. I've had it we are trying to help here and you are doing nothing but being a wimp about it. We are ninjas we have learned to do this kind of thing. If you have such a problem with us then leave us the hell alone understand me. Naruto hollered then took off. 
Ten Ten followed her friend to try to talk to him. They ran into the woods for several minutes before he stopped. Naruto, calm down. Ten Ten I can't, we are trying to help him and his village yet I almost feel like he is routing for us to die out there. Naruto yelled. I know Naruto but just please calm down, it's not his fault his father was killed by those thugs. I know but I can't stand it, he should try to not be so bitter to us. I know Naruto. She said then hugged the boy, just calm down alright. Yay, I'll be fine, I'm gonna hang out here for a while though. Mind if I stay? She asked releasing him, sure. They then laid down and went to sleep, only to be disturbed several hours later by a young boy dressed in rags. Who are you? Naruto asked. I am Haku, I am just out here gathering herbs. The boy answered. You were with the group that was fighting Zabuza, why do you fight? I fight to protect my precious people. You're Zabuza's accomplice around you, he didn't die. No, he didn't, but why do you fight what motivates you? I fight to prove I'm not what people take me for, plus for those precious to me. Like that girl? Haku asked motioning towards the still sleeping form of Ten Ten. Yes, like Ten Ten. Very well, I must be now, see you on the battlefield. Uzumaki Naruto. Very well see you Naruto. With that the young man left, Naruto decided it was time to leave and gently tried to wake up Ten Ten. Ten Ten you gotta wake up. Naruto said shaking her gently. Just a few more minutes. No we seriously have gotta go Zabuza is back. At this Ten Ten shot wide awake. Where were is he? She asked, healing, we need to go back now, I don't like being out here, besides the others are probably worried. With that the two left but as they approached Tazuna's house they could hear chirping but it died away and no one was outside when they arrived, the two then went to bed. The next day Kakashi and Sasuke left with Tazuna to the bridge and Naruto and Ten Ten slept in. Both woke up and were preparing to go out when a loud scream from Tsunami, they charged downstairs just in time to see Inari get shot at, Naruto thinking on an instant used Kawarimi to get Inari out of there while Ten Ten quickly knocked both thugs out with blows to the head. Inari. Rally the village it looks as thought an attack is coming. Right. With that the two ran towards the bridge only to find it shrouded in mist. As they got to the center they saw Sasuke coving Tazuna and Haku attacking them. They rushed at Haku he noticed them then as they were almost on him did a few hand seals and called out, Makio Hiyosho. The two found themselves surrounded by large mirrors of ice. Haku seemed to move within them and then tossed ice needles at them. Then a group of them headed right for Naruto he braced himself for the end, but it never came. Naruto watched in horror as Ten Ten took the needles for him. N. Naruto, don't, die, on me. With that Ten Ten fell to the ground and stopped breathing. Why, you bastard. Naruto yelled his eyes turning blood red, and an aura of red charka appeared around him. His katana reacted to the chakra by turning into a jagged and blood red version of itself. He then rushed forward and cleaved the ice mirror in two, destroying one and annihilating all of them with the force of the chakra. Haku was in shock no one had ever done that before, and then saw Naruto vanish in a flash of light and reappear in front of him. Before Haku could react Naruto had thrust his sword into Haku's heart, he died instantly. Naruto turned his attention to see Sasuke and Kakashi fighting Zabuza. Sasuke was behind Zabuza grabbed the missing nin's sword and threw it, the blade impaled its owner the it just seemed to be joined to Zabuza then he gurgled up blood and died. Naruto ran over to Ten Ten his chakra returning to normal, picked up her lifeless body and began to cry. Kakashi looked upon the scene with great sadness, he remembered the day his best friend died and he gained his Sharingan eye, then he noticed something about the position of the ice needles. Naruto give me Ten Ten quickly, Kakashi said his normally calm voice urgent. S. Sensei? She's still alive those needles are in the pressure points putting her into a death-like state give her here before she does die. Naruto gave Kakashi Ten Ten and the nin began to remove the needles that were in major places and using a healing jutsu, one of the few he knew to close the wounds. Just after he was finished Ten Ten's eyes opened once again. T. Ten Ten? Naruto asked, Naruto, I'm alive? She said. Ten Ten. Naruto yelled and hugged his friend tears coming from his eyes. I thought I lost you, he said crying, it's alright I promise I'm not going to leave you Naruto. Ten Ten said as she hugged her friend then held on to him. You should have let them hit me. Naruto said, no, 
I could never forgive myself if I did that. Why? Because Naruto I wouldn't be able to live with myself if you died. And I could if you died like that? Probably. No I couldn't. Kakashi who had been standing there just smiled under his mask. I need to bet with the Sandame on how long it is before these two get together. Ah young love, reminds me of you Rin. Kakashi thought. Naruto and Ten Ten's moment was interrupted when out of the blue a short very ugly man showed up with a small army of thugs. So Zabuza is dead huh? Good I won't have to pay him, Gado said. Don't we get a break? Naruto muttered then got in front of Ten Ten to defend his injured friend. Naruto, stay here and watch Ten Ten, Sasuke come with me, Kakashi said. Just as a battle was about to begin an arrow sailed through the air and hit Gado in the throat, he fell blood running out of his mouth. Hey you killed our meal ticket, one of the men yelled. Kakashi and Sasuke both made a small army of bunshins and Naruto maxed out his cage bunshin but because the other men weren't ninja they couldn't tell the difference to them being faced with those ninja and the small army of villagers was too much, they broke lines and ran. Moments later Naruto passed out from exhaustion, Ten Ten managed to catch him even though she was injured still. Chakra exhaustion let him sleep for a while he'll recover. I'll carry him back to Tazuna's, Kakashi said. I can manage it. Ten Ten said. I'll carry the kid, you carry that girl Kakashi, Tazuna said. With that the group went back to Tazuna's house and they laid Naruto in one of the beds and were about to leave. Um can I stay here with him? Ten Ten asked. I don't see why not, Kakashi said. With that they laid Ten Ten down beside Naruto and left the room, leaving the two nins to sleep. Ten Ten laid her head on Naruto's chest in an effort to assure him it was all okay, and he didn't dream she came back from the supposed dead and went to sleep. Naruto's mind Naruto found himself knee deep in a sewer looking place staring at a huge cage, within this cage sat the lord of hell itself in all his glory, the Kyubi no Kitsune. Hello Kit, it's been a while. Bellowed the Kyubi in a voice that seemed almost friendly. What do you want, fuzzball? You're here for what 12 years and now you choose to ask to be realized or whatever, not happening. Kit I deserve to be here that much I can see. I attacked in a blind rage in a search for vengeance but that is a story for another time. What are you talking about and why do you seem almost friendly bastard? Because Kit, I understand your pain I have see it for some time and despite what they say I am not truly evil but we are getting off track here. I want to help train you also I have a little present if you would my chakra well some of it, some other things along the line but for now I'd like to offer you this. At this point the Kyubi makes a scroll appear in front of Naruto. This is the Kitsune summoning contract, with it you can summon me. The trick to this is that you can use my chakra to do it without wasting your own. How do I know you are just trying to trick me huh? Because by the terms your father sealed me into you by if you were to die, I would die. So you're saving yourself huh? No kit, I'm making up for the past or trying to. Oh yay and before I forget this will also hide in your senses, don't worry it will not affect your appearance, plus where is what you'll love in Keki Jenke. To be honest it has no name but its effects are that it allows you to foresee movements similar to that of the Sharingan but without the ability to copy. Increased sight, also you can see weak points in armor and better control my chakra. For example you could use it to use your sword and Hiraishin together more effectively. Okay furball but what use would your chakra be to me I can't even seem to form it into normal jutsu. Ah a sensible question young one, you will learn demon jutsu. And also if your friend wishes it I will teach both of you a sword style, and also stop calling me fur ball I have a name it's Kyubi. Okay. Anything else you'd like to point out? Just one thing. I can see you have feelings for that female, 1010. Why don't you just tell her kit? Like she'd be interested foo, Kyubi. Just try kit. Oh well it's time for you to go back to reality you body is healed. To use your eyes just focus chakra into to them. Also you in for a surprise but first you need to sign that contact if you want it. Just sign your name in blood when you wake up these are the seals. Then you bite your thumb and the summoning happens understand. Yup, perfectly, new eyes, summoning scroll, training. Got it. With that the Kyubi sent him back to the real world. He didn't even realize that kid is actually an endearing term to foxes. Oh well it is my fault he's like this after all. Damn you Orochimaru. When Naruto woke up the first thing he saw was brown hair in his face, a lot of it. Holy shit, 1010. Naruto unsure of what to do decided on wrapping an arm around her to support the girl then dozed back to sleep himself. 
Jeez Kit didn't spend long in the world did you? Haha <laughs> very funny, it's not my fault I didn't want to disturb Ten Ten. Why is she in here though? She loves you Kit, she was worried when you passed out from exhaustion. I doubt it Kayubi, I'm her best friend not that. Who's usually right a 9000 year old Kitsune or a little 12 year old boy? Um maybe it's my life. I see everything that happens in it. Damn, I win Kit. Bastard Fox. I know and I enjoy every minute of it. So um Kayubi what do you know about what happened with my sword earlier? Your blade is designed to react to chakra, once we figure out what element you are you can use it with the sword to make an enhanced attack. Like if you are like your father you can use wind based attacks. In that case it reacted with my demon chakra you pulled out in your rage, part of that reason I decided to start training you. Okay so let me get this straight those swords are more powerful than the old man told us. I can only assume he wanted you to experiment with it and see what wood can do. Okay, will 1010 be able to do this too? Haha, <laughs> yes kid she can, you can explain it to her. Can you tell what my element is? Not yet kid. Your charka is still changing. Okay. Hey Kit she is waking up how about you go greet her eh? Hey WH. And with that the Kayubi unceremoniously sent Naruto back to consciousness. Ten Ten woke up. She felt Naruto's arm around her and smiled softly. If only he actually cared like this. Oh well. Then she realized he woke up and was staring at her. She blushed. Um morning. Morning Ten Ten. How are you feeling? Good. Um I had a talk with the Kayubi. What did he say? She yelled. Calm down not so loud. Sorry, just worried. He explained that he was sorry for what happened 12 years ago, how he had a reason for it but he won't tell me till I'm a little older, gave me a summoning contract which I need to sign, and I keki jenke, access to his chakra, plus training. He even offered to train you. Think he was lying. No it was in my mind, I concentrated so that if he was lying I would know. It was the truth. Well focus your chakra and see what happens. Okay. Naruto focused chakra into his eyes and the pupils turned blood red with slits for pupils exactly like Kayubi's eyes. Oh my god, Ten Ten said. Naruto looked afraid. Do you hate me now? Ten Ten realized what she did and hugged him but looked him in the eyes at the same time. I could never hate you Naruto. Thanks Ten Ten. No problem. Shouldn't you sign that contract before the others see it? Good idea. With that Naruto opened the contract beside him, stabbed his hand with a kunai that was on the nightstand, and quickly signed Uzumaki Naruto and made a bloody handprint on it the contract then burst into flames signaling it was active and vanished. What time is it? Um 12.30 am. Lovely we woke up in the middle of the night. We should go back to sleep. 10.10 said. Naruto laid down then 1010 laid down beside him. Naruto, yay, sorry for scaring you at the bridge like that. It's okay 1010 just don't scare me like that again, okay? I don't want to. With that they both drifted off into sleep, as soon as they were asleep a red charka seemed to come from Naruto and wrap around them then vanish. Welcome back, hey Kayubi, where am I? 1010 asked. 1010, yay I decided to bring her here to talk to. My mind must be the place to be. Your mind is a sewer Naruto, literally. 1010 said. You can change it kit, just focus on what you want the inside to look like and it will happen. Okay. Then the room suddenly turned into a large parlor room with red carpets, white walls and chairs. How's that? Yay I can sit now. 1010 said then sat down in a large recliner. Yay well can we go back to the task at hand here. Sure knock yourself out. I'm in spirit form. Sucks to be you then doesn't it? 1010 said. Pretty much. The reason I called both of you here is to explain something plus in this form I can do something else. I'm going to impart the knowledge of the demon sword style into your minds. Heck yes. Naruto and 1010 yelled. Kayubi's sweat dropped. Oh no. Not her to please don't let there be two trainaholics. Anyway. Here it is. Go have some fun with it. Scare the Uchiha and kick his ass for me. Now I need to sleep too so leave. Next day, the next afternoon found Naruto and Ten Ten sparing near the bridge while Tazuna finished it, both were working hard to master the style which was a little bit easier thanks to the Kayubi sending his knowledge of it to them the only trouble was training themselves to use it. 
The two had chosen to call this sword the Kitsun Furry, because it involved quick but flowing hits attacking whenever possible but also because of the speed of fast wielding could block almost anything weapon related. Naruto was able to get the fast swings down, but Ten Ten's style had more grace and perfection to it due to her almost daily practices with all of her blades while Naruto focused on jutsu. Then Kakashi appeared, it's time to go our mission is complete. Okay, Kakashi sensei. They answered then walked over onto the bridge to meet with Tazuna and Sasuke how had been waiting. Thanks for all your help, we never would have been able to finish the bridge if it wasn't for you. Tazuna told the team. No problem let's go, with that team 7 turned and began the journey back to Konoha. Team 7 was near the end of a week long break to relax after the whole deal with Zabuza, but unfortunately for Naruto and Ten Ten this week involved constantly doing the water walking jutsu thanks to their personal trainer from Hell Kyubi, but that was broken up by the Hokage calling them to his office but on the way they ran into the weirdest sight either of them had ever seen a frog near the hot springs and an old white haired man apparently peeping on the girls. Hey you get away from there. Ten Ten yelled. Do you have any idea who I am? The man said. Yay, a pervert now leave them alone. Naruto shouted. I am the legendary Senin, Jiraiya, the frog hermit. Whatever, Naruto go get the sandame. Hey what hang on let's not get hasty. But it was too late Naruto and grabbed Ten Ten and Hiraishin in the directions of the Hokage Tower. Damn it, this is turning out to be Arashi all over again. He said and he began at a dead run towards the Hokage Tower. Old man there was this really perverted guy at the hot springs and he was peeping and he claimed to be known as Jiraiya, does that mean anything to you? Naruto said really fast without breathing. Yes Naruto it does, that's just Jiraiya for you. He should be here soon. No sooner had the Sandame said that then Jiraiya jumped in through the window. Hey it's the pervert, Naruto said, the name is Jiraiya brat. Jiraiya. The reason I wanted you and Naruto here is that just before he went to fight the Kyubi Arashi asked that you train Naruto. Sandame said. Fine, I'll train him but not because I want an apprentice but because Arashi asked me to. I owe my student that much but I will want to take the brat away for a while he needs to see the other nations and learn other things. I won't go, Naruto said surprising everyone. What? Everyone yelled shocked. I won't leave 1010 10 behind. He said in a tone of voice that said it was pointless to argue. Naruto, don't say here just because of me I'll be fine. Ye listen to her, no, I'm not going without her that's final. Naruto, Ten Ten said clearly shocked at his reaction. Fine, she can go to if Jiraiya allows it. Tihi Sandame said. As long as she isn't another Tsunade I don't care. Then it's settled, you leave in an hour. I have already informed Kakashi and he is going to mentor Sasuke in private during the time you're gone. At this the group parted to get ready, or in Jiraiya's case to go to the hot springs. Naruto, I can't believe you did that. Ten Ten yelled at him as they walked. That was a great chance and you would have passed it up to stay here with me. Yes I would have Ten Ten. Why? Because after everything that has happened how the villagers treated me, how they might treat you if we aren't together to defend each other. Go on Kit say it. Screw off Fox, I care about you a lot okay. Naruto said then waited for Ten Ten to hurt him for it. Naruto, look at me. Ten Ten said in a tone of voice that Naruto didn't recognize it was soft and gentle like when he was hurt. He turned and faced her awaiting his fate of getting smacked, so possibly stabbed in the genitals knowing Ten Ten, but when he turned around he was amazed Ten Ten get leaned in on him and ed him. What the heck, ha ha told ya Kit. Shut up Kyubi. Ah my kit's gonna get laid, they grow up so fast. Shut up, with that Naruto blocked the fox. I told you I cared Naruto, jeez don't act like you expect me to hit you. Okay 1010, by this point the two had reached the apartment and set about the task of gathering things for a long trip but first they noticed something on the table a scroll addressed to 1010 as she opened it, there was a note along with it. 1010. This was left in my care after your parents died. It's a summoning scroll of the foxes, not demon foxes like Naruto's but regular ones. Yes, Naruto the all-knowing wise old man strikes again, and give me back my hat will you? Sandame. Ten Ten quickly signed the fox contract and it burst into flames, they then proceeded to pack their things. Um Ten Ten. Yay Naruto. Does this mean we are together now? 
Ha ha yeah I guess so. Why don't you want to be? Ten Ten said looking slightly worried. No, it's nothing like that I just wasn't sure. With that they left the apartment with their backpacks of supplies and weapons, also hand in hand. When they got to the bridge Jiraiya noticed this and couldn't help but tease the two. Aha so you just didn't want to leave you girlfriend huh brat? This caused both of them to blush. Shut up Aero Senen. What did you call me? Aero Senen. I am Jiraiya brat. You're also a pervert so you are Aero Senen. Whatever come on, but first I have two rules for you too. Okay. Ten Ten said. First, don't do anything I would do. Second, I don't care what you to do as long as I don't have to hear about Arashi's grandchildren for a long time yet. This made the two blush but also wonder, what wouldn't Aero Senen do? Deciding that question was better left unanswered the two continued on. Hey Aero Senen where are we going? Stop calling me that, and we are going to Wind Country, more specifically the village hidden in the sand. Why sand? Ten Ten asked. Because we are going to train there, no one would think of looking for us in sand. What are we going to learn? Whatever I feel like teaching, maybe summoning. Um we have that. Ten Ten told him. At this Jiraiya stopped and turned around, you're joking right? No I have the summon contract of foxes and Naruto has the contract of demon foxes. I didn't know about that one totally, just Sandame told me he found out the Kyubi isn't all that bad, something about his crystal ball. I wish he'd let me use it once in a while. You actually believe that? I trained Arashi, and Sandame was my teacher, of course I believe it. Aero Senen how far is it to sand? A week's travel walking. Oh man, what am I going to go with four days on the road? Hum tell you what I'll show each of you a jutsu Arashi created, it takes a lot of focus though. Teach us, Naruto said, at this Jiraiya formed a Rasengan with his hand. Notice how the chakra swells and the patterns it goes on. Now take this water balloon and replicate that pattern using the chakra in your hand and pop the balloon. That is step one. Finish that and I'll teach you step two. With that the two teens started trying to pop the balloons with their chakra. That should keep them busy for a while. Jiraiya thought. The rest of the day continued much the same, with the group walking about 10 hours before stopping to rest, Naruto and Ten Ten getting frustrated with the Rasengan and Jiraiya just happy he shut them up for asking are we there yet all day. Next day, Jiraiya had awake the group at sunrise, Got them food and got them moving but still had his fun by teasing them about Ten Ten sleeping on Naruto. Then part way through the day Naruto managed to figure out how to pop the balloon, after explaining it to Ten Ten she too popped the balloon. Not bad you too, but the next step is harder. At this he produced a rubber ball. Blow this apart using the same method as the balloon. Oh man, how many things do we have to blow up, that damn balloon was hard enough to figure out. Naruto said. This is the second of three steps, the next is forming one without something to channel the power through. This like the day before didn't really have much effect other than keep the kids occupied for Jiraiya. That night, damn can you believe how hard this is? Naruto fumed. Relax Naruto, this is probably a strong jutsu, I mean it was invented by the Yandaimi. Yeah I know but I just feel like Aero Senen just wants us to shut up or something. Yeah he probably does actually plus test our skill. Oh well we can get it. With that she ed him good night and went to sleep. Day 4. Hey Aero Senen, we did it. Naruto yelled at him. Congrats brat now for the hardest part, repeat what you just did without any form of aid. In other words make the Rasengan out of pure chakra not just cause water or rubber to move in the path of it. Several minutes later. Oh Kami this is hard. Naruto whined. Kit, focus your chakra into your hand then outwards in the way the water or rubber moved. Kayubi explained to him. Day 7, several hours out of sand. Hey Aero Senen, guess what? What? Ten Ten and I got the Rasengan down. The Kayubi helped how much during this? Um would you believe I did it on my own? No. Damn. Well what are you waiting for form a Rasengan, and prove you can do it? With that Naruto and Ten Ten each formed a Rasengan in their right hands. Well. I'll give you two credit you better than I thought even if the Kyubi is tutoring you. They then slammed the Rasengan into the sand and each had a small crater around them in a moment. Remember once we get into sand, do not mention being from the leaf understand. 
Two replies of yes arrow Senan answered him. Not you two. Jiraiya groaned. Sand. Things were going really well for the three until a guy with makeup and puppets crossed their paths and decided he felt like picking a fight. As Naruto and Ten Ten prepared to fight him a red-haired boy appeared in a swirl of sand. Be careful Kit, I sense Shukaku within him, take this outside of the city now, it seems his seal is wrong and it's messing with Shukaku. I can tell you how to fix it but we have to get him to let his guard down, try to reason and not piss him off. Shukaku, giving you trouble. This comment made the makeup guy's jaw fall to the ground. How do you know about Shukaku? I have my ways, I can fix the seal if you'd like. How do I know this isn't another assassination attempt? Because we are alike. At this Naruto pulled up his shirt and allowed the Kayubi's seal to be seen. I hold the Kayubi no Kitsune, he says Shukaku's seal is messed up, causing him to go berserk. Fine fix it but I will kill you if it doesn't work. Naruto, be careful. Ten Ten told him. Then Naruto began to make the hand seals Kayubi told him to. When he finished the seal's chakra seemed to leak from his hands to Gara's seal, the effect was almost instantaneous as the seal rearranged and Gara fell to the ground asleep. Is he okay? Makeup man asked. Yay, he will be fine, just exhausted. With that the other guy grabbed Gara and took off, and Naruto fell to the ground. Naruto are you okay? I burned most of my chakra to do that. Okay. Let's get you home then Naruto. Unbeknownst to them a man with black hair and dark eyes watched them from the shadows before turning and walking away. Okay, finished the second chapter in a day, go me. I brought Gara and Jiraiya into the picture. The way this is done they just missed the Chunin exams because of the mission to wave. So they have the whole year between the exams to train. Arashi had the request of Jiraiya to train Naruto and Kakashi wished to train Sasuke like he did in the show this way all of team 7 trains instead of just Sasuke getting the most attention. Also I'll give ya 3 guesses on who was in sand at the same time. Finally Naruto managed the Rasengan in a week and in this 1010 has as much potential as he does due to them training together constantly, plus he did that on his own the Kyubi is giving them tips on what to do. Finally in this demon summons like the Kitsune, Kyubi, and normal foxes are different. It's like a power divider normal and advanced if you would. Something to look forward to. Also for everyone that is rooting for Sasuke to beat his ass handed to him well I can assure you that by this plan he will betray Leaf soon, leaving a team spot open, possibly for defecting Nin but as to what sets him off I've leave you to guess. I know who will fill the team space, and I will say that I gave a hint in this chapter what's to come. Ka Itachi Ka. Okay brats. The first order of business today is to get you new clothes, then I want you to get arm and legs weights plus armor. Jiraiya said. Why Aero Senen these are fine. Naruto, that orange screams kill my sorry ass cause I suck, the armor will help you take hits, and finally the weights will increase your strength and chakra control. Fine, good you here is some money have at it. With that Jiraiya vanished presumably to go peep again and Naruto and Ten Ten started their walk through the streets of sand which literally were just that sand, it was bright and hot out with no clouds or wind. They enjoyed just walking through town here just for the simple fact they were no one here, Naruto received no glares and they were just a couple of normal kids to anyone that saw them. After a while they came upon a clothes store, and poor Naruto suddenly found himself clothes shopping with a girl, a fate worse than hell itself. Hello, can I help you? The salesperson a woman in her early twenties with black hair asked. Yes, we are looking for new clothes, something that can stand up to being with a ninja in battle if you have it. Ah yes, we have something like that, the cloth is designed to infuse with small amounts of the user's chakra, making it possible to repair the fabric and also making it harder to rip. That should work, Ten Ten told her. Also, before I forget the chakra allows the clothing to readjust to the wearing size. So we won't have to worry about growing because they will change to fit us. Correct. Okay, where are the clothes at with this kind of fabric? Right this way, miss. With that the sales lady lead Naruto and Ten Ten towards the back of the shop through rows and rows of clothing until they came to a section near the back of the shop. Here it is, bring what you want up when you're done. After an hour of trying on new things and messing around with different looks they finally selected what they wanted. 
Naruto had picked a loose fitting black shirt and pants with a blood red coat similar to the one Arashi once wore on the back of the coat was an image of a nine tailed fox looking as thought it was about to charge forward with the kanai it was holding in its teeth. Ten Ten had gotten something similar she had gotten something similar she got a loose black shirt with a regular red fox on it the odd thing about hers was that she had a shadow on it and the shadow had nine tails instead of one and she had also gotten black pants. They each got three of their new outfits, the most surprising thing was that it barely scratched the money Jiraiya left them. Think this will satisfy Aero Senen? Yay, think so it's a lot more intimidating. Did you see a weapons store around? No, not yet. After a half hour of looking they managed to find the store, it was lined wall to wall with different sorts of weapons and Naruto went to see about the weights 1010 was looking at swords and weapons. Hello, do you have any weights we could buy? Naruto asked the man he was clearly in his fifties with graying black hair. What kind of weights are you looking for? What kinds are there? Standard weights that only have a set amount, or chakra weights that adjust depending on how much the user can take. Um two sets of the chakra weights for arms and legs. Okay. With that the clerk went into the back and got them. They appeared to be simple metal arm and small leg bands but the man demonstrated adding chakra and it got heavier and also showed them they could change the shape and design on the weights without losing the effect. Hey Naruto don't forget about the armor. Oh right we also need to sets of ninja armor. It's over there on that rack beside the swords, pick one you like and bring it back. Naruto walked over to join 1010 at the weapons rack. Hey Naruto, yay, I think we should get a second sword. Why? What happens if we lose one in battle and can't get to it? Good point. Hey aren't these the same kind the old man got us? Yea they are. At this Naruto settled on a katana in a black sheath to match the one he had, and 1010 10 got one in a blue sheath as well. They then paid for what they got and figured Jiraiya had planned on them changing their images a good bit because they still had a little bit of money left. Naruto put both of his katanas over his back so that they were hidden within his coat. The leg and arm weights were hidden under his clothes, the armor fit under his shirt thanks to the changing qualities of it without even showing. Ten Ten chose to put her swords attached to her back so they came up with a hilt at each shoulder, her weights were hidden as well as her armor in the same fashion as Naruto's, she also let her hair out of its buns allowing it to spill down over her shoulders. Overall the two now appeared far more threatening due to this and in Naruto's case he looked more like his father than anyone had ever realized. Where do you think Aero Senen is? I'm not sure. Right here brats, damn you actually did good picking new stuff. Naruto, your father would be proud. Jiraiya said coming up for behind them. Thanks Jiraiya, whoa no Aero Senen this time. Jiraiya joked. Just had to ruin the moment didn't you? Yup, come on I have someone I want both of you to meet. Just promise you won't attack him when you see him. Okay, I promise. 1010 10 said, sure, Aero Senen. Jiraiya then lead them to a small restaurant in the center of the village. It was a nice place by his standards but to Naruto and 1010 10 it was amazing, partly because they had never eaten out anywhere but the ramen stand. He led them over to a table in the far back of the restaurant to where a man that looked like an older version of Sasuke sat at a table. Aero Senen, tell me that isn't. Naruto said going white. Yes, that is Itachi but at least hear him out Naruto. He murdered his whole clan except Sasuke why should we? 1010 10 said clearly scared as well. It wasn't his fault just listen okay. With that he calmly lead Naruto and 1010 10 over to the table and they sat down. Hello, Itachi how have you been? Good for the most part, still dealing with my demons I suppose. That's bound to happen, look I'd like for you to help me train these two. Really wise that. Konoha will never take me back. Because they are going to need help and you need to clear your name that's why. Wait hang on a minute I'm confused, why is Aero Senen talking to Itachi, and why would we need his help? Naruto said. Because he is strong, and as for his story, Itachi you should tell them. It started like this, Konoha night of the Uchiha massacre. Itachi was sleeping just outside of the Uchiha compound when he was awoken by the sound of someone nearby. Then without warning someone called out a technique he never heard the name of it and he seemed to pass out. When he awoke he was back in one of the places near the war and he was remembering the time his best friend was captured by enemy nins. Hang on I'm coming. 
With that he drew his Anbu sword and charged into what he thought was the enemy stronghold, in reality it was the Uchiha compound and the enemy nins were family. Itachi saw his family and due to the jutsu began his attack on them two of the Uchiha were by his best friend, he cut the first's head off. His best friend reacted trying to save the second but fell victim to Itachi's sword. Under the effects of the genjutsu Itachi thought they threw him into the path, he felt the Mangekyo Sharingan form in his eye and set out hell-bent on revenge. All of them died that night but one of them had managed to hit Itachi's forehead protector and with a glancing blow, he slaughtered everyone until one last person stood before him, Sasuke or in the genjutsu it was a young enemy nin. Itachi chose to torment him, and used to Mangekyo to make him watch the slaughter of his comrades over and over again, in reality he was seeing the Uchiha massacre over and over. Come find me when you're stronger, weakling. With that Itachi left the compound and the genjutsu was released from him. Oh dear Kami, what have I done? Itachi said trying to control his emotions, and then he did what anyone would in his place, ran. Present time, and that's what happened, Itachi said. Okay, but how did Aero Senen know you are telling the truth? I was out finding information on Orochimaru, and I uncovered what had happened thanks to one of his henchmen I captured. Orochimaru was the one that placed that genjutsu in hopes of weakening Itachi enough to take him over, it failed fortunately but no one will believe even me on this one so thus Itachi is forced to remain a missing nin. How many families are going to be destroyed by that bastard? Kayubi, what are you talking about? I supposed it's time I tell you about the events of the night I attacked Konoha but hang on a moment while I form a link to the girl. At this a small thread of red chakra connected Naruto and Ten Ten under the table where no one else could see it. Ten Ten, Kayubi wants to talk to us, don't be surprised when you hear us in your head okay. He whispered to her. Okay, Naruto, she whispered back. Okay, now that everyone is here, my mate had just given birth to a new kit, hey don't seem so surprised you can summon the others through the contract anyway she was weak so I left to find food. I was out and then I smelled blood, lots of it. When I turned to the cave I saw several men with leaf headbands kill my kit, my mate was already dead. The leader was a snake-like man who also reeked of snakes and seemed fairly powerful, he was a coward and teleported away with a jutsu, I killed his followers and headed towards Konoha in revenge you know the story from the point on. By the time I realized what happened the yandaimi was dead and I was within you. Sorry kit. That's so sad, so everyone's pain is the result of this guy. Ten Ten said. Don't worry Kayubi one day I'll kill Orochimaru. No, one day we will kill him Naruto, no way I'm letting you go alone this time. But Ten Ten, no buts, I'm going. Thanks you too, but you have a long ways to go before you are ready to even think about challenging him. He is one of the three Senen, like Jiraiya. You will have to train hard and push yourselves to your limits and even then increase them several fold before you can even stand a chance of killing him. Well do it Kayubi don't worry. Ten Ten said. Thanks you too. Well talk about this more later I'm going to sleep. With that the Kayubi cut the connection to Ten Ten and went back to sleep within Naruto. Are you two okay? You kinda spaced out. Jiraiya asked. Yay. Just a lot to take in at once Arrow Senen. I just learned the reason behind Kayubi's attack on Konoha as well. Why did he attack it then? Orochimaru killed his mate and newborn kid with a group of nins wearing leaf headbands. So it was revenge on an act Orochimaru blamed on leaf. Yes, bastard has caused more pain to everyone than I thought. Jiraiya swore. That settles it I'm coming too, I want my shot at that bastard for all he's done. Itachi told the group. Yay, but first let's eat. Itachi is paying. Hey, who said I was paying to feed everyone? Later that night, okay Naruto, Ten Ten I'm going to be teaching you guys fire jutsus. Itachi said. Like the one Sasuke uses? Ten Ten asked. Exactly. This is the first one to learn, if you can master it, it will make mastering the others easier. With that Itachi showed them the hand seals then said. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu and with that a large ball of flame shot out of Itachi's mouth and impacted the sand. That technique takes a large amount of chakra to perform but from what I have heard of your fighting abilities you should be okay. Master that and I will teach you the next jutsu. Okay, Itachi, 
They said and with that they began to form the hand seals 1010 10 focused to little chakra and Naruto used to much, then end result was one small attack and one that was way too big, that missed everything else and hit Jiraiya in the ass. Right, well this is going to take a while. Itachi muttered while the other two laughed at Jiraiya. Kama, the group was nearing the end of its stay in sand and was soon to return to Konoha for the Chunin exams when Jiraiya had been called to the case cage's office. Itachi prepared the group to run for it if something bad happened although Ten Ten and Naruto weren't very keen on leaving Jiraiya to fend for himself, they would never admit it but Jiraiya had become like a father to them. Itachi stood alert and ready for something to happen, Ten Ten had leaned against Naruto, and Naruto had his arm around his girlfriend while they waited for their friend and sensei. Case Cage's office, Jiraiya, don't look so surprised I've known of your presence here. What do you want from me? I have information on Orochimaru but I will give it to you on one condition. What would that be? That you take one of my children with you on your trip, I need to know at least one of them is safe. Deal. Orochimaru is the leader of sound, I am being forced to help him with an invasion of Konoha during the Chunin exams, as much as I'd like to send Gara along with you Orochimaru knows too much about him and I cannot. I would however like to Tamari, my daughter with you. She is an expert with a battle fan. Where can I find her? With all this going on it would be best to leave as soon as possible, as much as I would love a shot at Orochimaru I cannot risk the children in my group's welfare over my problems. Yes that would be best, she is waiting downstairs I told her what I planned and for her to pack. Take care Senen, I have a feeling my time on this earth draws short. Good luck Kaze Cage. With that Jiraiya left stopping only to get Tamari, she was a blonde haired girl, of the same age as 1010. She kept her fan on her back, and her hair was up in several ponytails. Where are we headed Jiraiya? She asked, to meet up with the rest of the group, I guess I'll explain who they are to you. Itachi is the oldest, he has black hair and very dark eyes. He possesses a keki genkei known as the Sharingan. Orochimaru tricked him into killing most of his clan. Naruto is a blonde hair boy about a year younger than you. He was blue eyes and is the container for the Kyubi no Kitsune, don't be scared of him he is one of the nicest people I have ever met. His father was the Yandaimi of Konoha, Arashi Kazama. Ten Ten is a girl of your age she has brown hair and eyes. Her family specializes in weapons and has the ability to adapt to any form of weaponry, ancestrally they were weapon smiths or wielders but as she is the last of her clan that doesn't seem likely. Quote, Naruto was the one that helped my brother and calmed Shukaku wasn't he? Yes, he told me about that the other day. With that the two continued their walk towards the others in silence. Meanwhile, he has been gone a long time. Ten Ten said worriedly. If Aero Senen is having trouble we should have seen Gamabunta by now. Naruto is right, if Jiraiya is having trouble we'd be able to sense his chakra or see Gamabunta. Just then Jiraiya turned a corner and came towards them followed by Tamari. Jiraiya, good to see you're back. Who's the girl? I am Tamari, my father asked that I come along. Get to know each other later we have to move, gotta make it fast, we have a major problem in Konoha. With that Jiraiya forced the group to begin to more extremely fast, using chakra to increase their speed as they moved. Konoha, Hokage's office several days later. We have a major problem. Jiraiya practically yelled as he burst into the Hokage's office. What's wrong Jiraiya, did something happen to one of the children? The Hokage asked concerned. No, Orochimaru and Sound are going to move against us during the Chunin exams, Sand is being forced to help them, but on a side note we have discovered Uchiha Itachi was under a genjutsu because of Orochimaru when he slew the Uchiha clan. Also we now have the case cage's daughter in our group due to him wishing for protection for at least one of his children. Quote. Can you prove what you said about the Uchiha is correct? Yes, I can. At this Jiraiya related everything that happened during the trip to Sand. I see. Well this works out well for us then. Kakashi has requested Sasuke become his apprentice instead of a whole team. I propose we make the new team under Itachi. Who would this team be? The Case Cage's daughter, Uzumaki Naruto, and Ten Ten. Sounds good. Meanwhile, Naruto, Ten Ten. Tamari and Itachi waited for Jiraiya to give the all clear for Itachi to enter into Konoha. Suddenly a kunai came flying at Itachi who just ducked out of the way and activated the Mangekyo. 
You may have won over the Hokage, but I will never listen to your lies. Sasuke yelled his own Sharingan blazing. I don't want to fight you, Sasuke. Then just die, he yelled and did two hand seals suddenly a chirping sound filled the air, Chidori, Sasuke yelled that he attempted to run Itachi through with the jutsu. Itachi just dodged out of the way kicked Sasuke in the back and sent him into a tree. Give up, I don't want to hurt you. Too bad traitor. He did seals again. Kaden. Hosenka no jutsu, and with that he sent multiple balls of flame towards Itachi. Itachi countered by dodging moving in with enhanced speed, and sending multiple punches into Sasuke's gut and face, he then kicked him into the air and began to form hand seals. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu. The massive ball of flame hit Sasuke in the back, badly burning him, also ending the fight because he passed out in pain. Moments later Kakashi arrived on the scene. What happened? He demanded. Sasuke came out of nowhere and attacked me, both Naruto and Ten Ten can vouch for that. A likely story, what do you two have to say? Sasuke came out of nowhere and used a jutsu he called the Chidori and attempted to hit Itachi with it. Ten Ten answered. Itachi tried to get him to stop but Sasuke wouldn't listen, so thus he ended up like that. Kakashi sighed, I guess I'll have to teach Sasuke to control his temper. With that Kakashi picked up Sasuke and headed towards the hospital. Oh by the way you're allowed into town. The group then headed into town, many people amazed at the look of Naruto, some even mistaking him for the Yandaimi at first. Word quickly spread about that, and people began to wonder just who Naruto was. Naruto and Ten Ten were leading Tamari to see the Sandame and were amazed when the guards didn't even make a move to try to stop them this time they just nodded and yet them pass. Hey old man, we're back. Hello Naruto, Ten Ten, I take it this is Tamari. Yes, that's me, yes, here is your head protector. Naruto and Ten Ten, Kakashi has requested to take Sasuke on as his only student. What about us? Ten Ten asked. Both of you and Tamari will be placed on a new genin team under Uchiha Itachi. Hell yes, someone better than that pervert Kakashi he only was concerned with Sasuke anyway. Yes well now that that's taken care off. Naruto, with your new clothes you resemble your father in many ways, you are old enough to move into your family house now you can take 1010 with you, plus it has more than enough rooms for Tamari if she chooses to stay with you too. Here are the instructions to get to it. Good luck he said handing them a key in some directions. Several minutes later, the three found themselves in front of a large mansion made of stone. In the center hall a family tree hung ending at Naruto. Ten Ten was thrilled to find a forge within the house as well as hot springs on the property. Tamari had agreed to stay and was given a room across from Naruto, Ten Ten's room was beside Naruto's. As he entered into the master bedroom he found a scroll on the bed. Naruto. If you are reading this then I have died sealing the Kyubi within yourself. I am sorry for this my son but it was my only option, only a Kazama could survive the strain of having the Kyubi sealed within them. Your mother was Uchiha Rin. She died when the hospital collapsed during the assault. I do not know if you will possess the Sharingan or not, your mother was an exile from the clan, disowned because she refused to follow what they felt she should do. She was never a stuck up ass like the rest of them. Uchiha Itachi was the only other one that she spoke to towards the end, he is a good man I hope you end up meeting him someday. I know that by the time you are reading this you will have become a genin and mastered the Horishin, hell maybe even found a girl for yourself if you're anything like your old man. Whatever you do, do not grow up and be like Arosenin, Jiraiya. Well in power yea you can but in morals don't do it, I don't care what you have to do but do not turn out like him. Also upon reading this you may take the last name of Kazama because I know you are ready for it. Our clan is age old allies with the Hyugas go and see Hisashi then show him this note. That's right man, your old teammate had a kid after all. My other teammate was Uchiha Fugaku, he was the lord of stuck up assholes, and I honestly hope he died before you got the pleasure of meeting him. Finally remember son, your mother and I love you. Love, Kazama Urashi, your father. Naruto started crying at the end of his letter, he finally had proof that his parents had cared for him and not just seen him as the demon at the end of their lives. He father had put all those doubts to rest in his letter. Ten Ten heard Naruto and walked in to see what was wrong. 
He just handed her the letter and she glanced over it. Understanding what was wrong with him she just gently pulled him over to her and held him as he cried after a while the two drifted off to sleep. Arashi would be proud kid. Jiraiya said from the window seal then he took off. Morning came quickly for Naruto, who awoke with Ten Ten sleeping softly with him. Man I could get used to this. Ha ha. I think she could to Kit. Who asked for your opinion Kayubi? I speak freely Kit. Meanwhile, Hokage's office. The instructors for the rookie nine well ten now, plus team guy had gathered in the Hokage's office. Why have you called us here today Sandame? Because I have decided to hold a tournament within the genin ranks, whining team will become chunin. We are going to need the nins we can get, plus I have suspicions about something I want to confirm. The tournament will start today at noon. Good luck. With that the junin went about their way to collect their students. Itachi was amazed when he entered Naruto's house, he had always known the Yandaimi had a large clan house but this was overkill. He then proceeds to search through the many rooms until he found Tamari, awake in the kitchen making breakfast. Hello Tamari, have you seen Naruto or Ten Ten? I think they're still asleep Itachi. Where is his room at? Master bedroom, in the right wing. Thanks. When Itachi entered the room he smiled at his friends and students lying there peacefully asleep, but he knew he had to wake them up so he did it with a form of grace. Wake the hell up, we have a big day today, he yelled. Naruto looked around in confusion, Ten Ten see what happened and not being pleased with Itachi hurled a rain of kanai at the poor Sharingan user. When they exited the room several minutes later they found Itachi tacked to the wall by no less than 30 kanai. Sorry about that Itachi, I don't take being woken up well my most people. I feel sorry for you Naruto. Oh she doesn't try to kill me. Well that's good I suppose, any chance of getting me off this wall. After breakfast, with that the two walked away. Hey, come back, tournament, welcome everyone, today's first match will be team guy against team 7. So well Hayuga Neji, Haruno Sakura, and Rock Lee from Team Guy please report Tahi Field and Kazama Naruto, Ten Ten, and Tamari, of Team 7. Both teams lined up side by side in the training field or makeshift tournament zone. Neji activated the Byakugan, with the others merely dropped into Taijutsu stances while Lee dropped his weights. On the other side of the field Naruto drew a katana, Ten Ten drew a kanai and dropped into a stance, and Tamari pulled her fan. Ready, begin. In an instant Lee was upon the group ready to strike, only to be blocked by Naruto, who used the Horizon to match speeds with Lee. Ten Ten faced off against Neji, taking special care not to get hit by his fists, finally Tamari had knocked Sakura down with a massive wind strike. In a second blast Sakura was knocked into a tree and knocked unconscious. Ten Ten stopped and Neji seemed to connect, only to find a Kawarimi in her place. Tamari seeing this setup knocked Neji from his feet, as he prepared to get up a kanai was against his throat. Yield, Ten Ten said, I give, Neji said, the remaining two fighters turned to see Lee and Naruto going at it blow for blow. Then Naruto dropped back slightly and a blue orb appeared in Naruto's hand. Rasengan, he yelled and slammed the orb into Lee's face, it wasn't full charge to kill him so it only broke his nose and knocked him out. Winner, Team 7. Sandame declared, next match team 8 versus team 6. Ino attempted her possession jutsu right of the bat which got her knocked out by Kiba and Akamaru. Choji was defeated by Hinata using the Byakugan to block the chakra points on him, and Shikamaru being his lazy ass self just gave up saying it was too troublesome. Next is a special match, Kazama Naruto versus Uchiha Sasuke. Why does Naruto have to fight two matches? That isn't fair to us. Sandame I can take both Naruto and Ten Ten let them both fight. Are you sure Sasuke? Yes. With that Naruto and Ten Ten both advanced into the arena. Bring it idiot, Sasuke said. With that they rushed each other. Sasuke used the Sharingan to block and predict their moves. The battle like the past was being fought mostly with Taijutsu just so they wouldn't kill each other. Come on Naruto is this all you and your whore of a girlfriend can manage? Sasuke said. This pissed Naruto off, majorly. He activated the demon's eye and charged at Sasuke. Before Sasuke realized what hit him he was airborne from a kick by Naruto, Ten Ten throw a kanai that went up Sasuke's ass. Always knew he had something up there, but that's a bit much. Naruto commented, 
Then Harishand above Sasuke and with a chakra enhanced kick, sent him spiraling back to earth. Just before impact he was met with a furious kick him 10-10 the sent him crashing through three trees and impacting a fourth, the Uchiha had just had his ass handed to him. Winner Kazama Naruto, and 10-10. Final match, Team 7 vs. Team 8. SW. We F. Forfeit. Hanada told him. Why? He asked clearly surprised. I H. Had. My. Byakugan. A. Active. D. During. T. That. F. Fight. They. Are to S. Strong. Very well. Team 7. Come to my office. Hokage's office. I was very impressed with that battle today. You seem to understand each other's talents and traits very well. Tamari you were a bit off but I will say that was because you were new to this. Now, catch. With that he tossed three vests at the group. Old man this is. Yay that's right Naruto. Welcome to Chunin rank. Yes. We did it. Ten Ten cheered. Come one let's go get some food to celebrate. Tamari said then they left. I didn't believe Jiraiya but he was right. Those three are like the Senen only without Orochimaru. Arashi if only you could see your son. It was a seemingly calm day in Konoha the Chunin exams were to be in a week, and the former Team 7, were hard at work training with Itachi and Jiraiya. Naruto and Ten Ten spared going all out, while Tamari was being brought up on everything Naruto and Ten Ten had worked on before her arrival but meanwhile something else began to happen. With Sasuke, damn, how did I get beat by Naruto and Ten Ten they are nothing compared to me. I can help you, gain power Sasuke and slay the village, your brother. Who are you? My name is Orochimaru. I am one of the Senen I left the village to seek the ultimate power. And you can promise me the death of those I hate, and the revival of my clan. Of course I can, this is what you have to do. At that Sasuke and Orochimaru worked out a plan that would forever change the face of Konoha. Team 7. Man I can't believe how bad Jiraiya and Itachi grilled us. Naruto groaned as he flopped onto a couch in his house. Yay, I know what you mean Naruto. Ten Ten said before sitting beside her boyfriend. I'll agree on that one, what do you two want to do? Tamari asked. I vote we get some food and relax. I agree with that one. So what do you guys want? Ramen. For once I agree, I think we are all too tired to make food today. Ten Ten said with a laugh. The group then devoured over 30 bowls of ramen in total. Hey guys, yay Naruto, do you think it will come to war? I think it will blow over Naruto. I hope it does too, this is my home now. Tamari said surprising all of them. What about sand? It's nice there and my family is there, but I've come to like it here and I honestly don't want to leave. Quote, you're welcome to stay in my house as long as you like Tamari. Thanks Naruto, Jiraiya, Sensei. I have a bad feeling about all of this. I know Jiraiya, I feel something bad is to come soon. Sandame told his former student. What do you think will happen? Offhand I cannot be sure. I hope my students will be okay. I never thought I'd see you take another student Jiraiya, let alone two. I never planned on it, but that kid is just as motivating as Arashi was in his youth, his girlfriend isn't too bad at it either. Ha ha, yay I know what you mean. Well sensei, has there been any word of Tsunade? Not for a long time I'm afraid, she is still roaming and gambling. I'm afraid the deaths of her brother, love, and Arashi were too much for her. I don't even think she knows Naruto is Arashi's child. I don't either or she would be here, for nothing else to see Naruto through, although he has grown up well, even has a girl now sensei. I know, I have been aware of his and Ten Ten's relationship for some time, I hope they are happy together, they deserve it. I know, the kids have had a major burden on them since they could first talk. Yes, but I must admit I see a lot of potential in them. I'm telling you sensei, they will be as great or surpass the senens in the prime, before they are even 18 at this rate. Well see Jiraiya, well see. Hayugas, Hanada, Neji, soon we will all be locked in a grand struggle I'm afraid. It seems by now, that war will come soon to Konoha, wait out for each other. Neji, your father would never forgive me if you died, I'd be afraid to meet his spirit. Hanada, I know I never said this much, but you are my oldest daughter and I am proud of you. Hasashi said. Thank you father. Hasashi, how long do you think it will be? 
Not long, and I'm afraid people will die. It's the nature of war. Team 7, I'm going to bed guys, good night. Tamari told the two then headed off to sleep. Naruto and Ten Ten headed back to their room and got ready for bed. I love you Naruto, Ten Ten said, as she laid down on him like usual. I love you too, Ten Ten. With that the two drifted off to sleep. Itachi, I can't believe it has come to this, Orochimaru you will pay someday. Just please don't make it be with my friend's blood. Who am I kidding those three are more like the sisters and brother I lost. Sasuke, I hope you never do anything to Rash, so I will have to kill you I'm afraid. I will not let you hurt them. Itachi then polished off a glass of sake and went to sleep. Kakashi, Obito, I'm sorry it seems as thought I have wound up in major problems. I have lost Sensei's son's faith, and with it I feel ashamed, what should I do Obito? Rin is gone, you're gone, Sensei is dead, I'll do what I can to make it up to him. On this I swear. Kayubi, sleep well kits, you're going to need it. Sakura, oh my god, I can't believe it I'm supposed to go watch the sun rise with Sasuke tomorrow. She squealed to her mother. Good luck dear, I know I'm going to go to bed now, it'll come back much faster. Sakura said, 5.30, good morning Sasuke. Sakura said, morning he said, the she sat beside him and time slowly slipped by. If Sakura was any good as a ninja she would have sensed a large force close by. A lot of ninja had awakened and were out on their morning rituals. Then at exactly 5.59 Sakura felt a chakra rush from Sasuke. Sasuke what are you, Chidori? And he plunged the attack into Sakura's heart she fell dead. Sasuke's Sharingan changed into the Mangekyo Sharingan. A Maitaro. He cried and shot black flames into the gate of Konoha. With a mighty bang the gates collapsed under the force and damage of the Amaterasu and the sand and sound army was upon Konoha. Attack! Someone cried out as ninja began to mount a defense, among them made a guy, Rock Lee, Hayuga Hasashi, Hayuga Neji, and Hayuga Hanada. The battle raged at the front gates as rank after rank of shinobi fought. Jiraiya and Itachi entered the fray moments later. Kuchio's no jutsu, Jiraiya cried after the blood and hand seals, Gamabunta had joined the battle, only to be met by Manda, the snake of Orochimaru. Naruto, a loud bang had awoken everyone, within moments the three chunin were outside seeing what was going on. The smoke rising from the front gates just screamed trouble, and they took off at a record pace towards it. Arriving they found total chaos, jutsus raged left and right, blood from the slain ran in the streets, wounded nins cried out in pain, while others fought to defend or destroy. The three raced into the fry drawing weapons. Good luck guys, good luck. With that the attacking nins drove the three apart. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu. Naruto cried and burned a sound genin in the chest, then stabbed him with the katana. Using the horizon, Naruto began to try to take a chunk out of the enemy nins. He found himself beside Itachi and Jiraiya who had been fighting hard. Itachi had the Mangekyo activated and Jiraiya stood ready with a Rasengan. Gamabunta and Manda had taken their fight away from the field leaving the Toad Senen to fend for himself. Fancy seeing you guys here. Naruto joked as he parried a nin's attack. Ha ha, now's a great time to be joking kid. Jiraiya told him. I know, but it helps me a little. Tamari, hello, sister, came the voice of Gara. Gara, why are you here? Our orders are to invade Konoha, but I will not kill you. If you plan to take Konoha you can have it over my dead body. But Tamari, no buts, I refuse to leave and that's final. Turning her fan towards her brother. Brother and sister seemed to stay each other down for but a moment then Gara turned and crushed a sound nin with his sand. Lead the way sis, I'm here too, Konkuro said falling into line with his siblings. The three tried to fight off the nins. Then one approached Tamari with a high level ice assassination jutsu which formed his first into a long blade of ice. Just as it seemed it would hit her, Konkuro got in the way. He fell backwards, blood spurting from his open wound. I'm sorry guys, he said as blood came from his mouth, then it was over Konkuro lay slain. This sent Gara and Tamari into a rage, Gara seemed once more possessed by Shukaku's corrupt seal, and Tamari seemed like Naruto when using Kayubi's chakra, sand and sound nin began to fall left and right of them. Kakashi, 
Kakashi had his Sharingan activated when he saw something that horrified him. Sasuke was fighting for the enemy, and then he knocked Ten Ten unconscious and ran away with her. He knew he would never get to her in time and fell back searching for Naruto. Naruto, Naruto, Jiraiya, and Itachi were killing nins in sync then Kakashi had appeared near them. Naruto, Ten Ten has been captured by Sasuke be betrayed us. For a moment Naruto seemed in shock. Summon me Kit, I have revenge you go for her. Naruto then did the hand seals faster than he ever had before the Kyuubi's chakra becoming obvious around his body. Kuchio's no jutsu, the whole field seemed to freeze in that second. Naruto, with the Kyuubi's chakra, stood atop the Lord of Hell, the Kyuubi no Kitsune, the killing intent they emitted was so great those closest to them, wet themselves. Then in an instant the Kyuubi was within the sand and sound lines and Naruto, Itachi, Jiraiya, and Tamari who had seen them take off, ran off after Sasuke. Kama, Naruto and company ran through the woods for what seemed to them to be hours, until they approached a clearing where a battalion of sound nins had joined with Sasuke, one of them now held Ten Ten as Sasuke himself prepared to fight. Damn, it's a trap. Itachi swore, I don't care. With that Naruto charged in. Kids got guts I'll give him that much. Jiraiya muttered then ran. Well, Naruto let's settle this. Sasuke said as he activated his Mangekyo. Sukuyomi. Sasuke said to use one of the Mangekyo's talents but surprisingly it had no effect on Naruto, the Sharingan user just found himself staring into the demon eyes of one pissed of Kazama. Meanwhile Itachi, Tamari, and Jiraiya were working on getting Ten Ten free from the Nins. Naruto formed hand seals, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Six sword wielding Naruto's popped into existence. Sasuke, today you die. Naruto angrily declared and the seven charged at Sasuke. He dodged and destroyed all but one of the clones, the real Naruto landed a kick to his back sending him flying. Amaterasu, a chain of black flames leapt at Naruto, who used the Horishin to get out of the way. When he reappeared Sasuke was in front of him his hands chirping. Naruto immediately began to form a Rasengan. Chidori, Sasuke cried and charged. Rasengan, with that the two mighty attacks impacted each other chakra seemed to flare in strings between the two combatants before a mighty explosion took place. As the smoke cleared Naruto rose up on one side and from the other Sasuke stood, the battle resumed. Sasuke pulled a blade he had along his back, the former property of one of the Anbu he had killed. The two charged, blades clashing in the smoke and flames caused by the jutsu explosion, they almost seemed as thought two ghosts locked in combat. On the far side of the field, the snake Senen came out and charged at his former comrade. Hello Jiraiya, Orochimaru, Itachi, watch Ten Ten and Tamari all handle the snake. Kuchio's number Jutsu, both cried. Gamabunta reappeared as did Manda. Jiraiya, can't you go five minutes without picking a major fight? He said drawing his sword. These weakling again, I demand a sacrifice once this is over Orochimaru. Then the Senen and Summons charged at each other, in an age-old rivalry. Sasuke threw a cord that wrapped around Naruto's wrist. Kaden, Ruka no Jutsu, and sent a steam of fire down it badly burning Naruto's left wrist and hand. Bastard, Naruto cried in pain, the only bastard is you Naruto, your parents hated you that's why you're an orphan, and you know what I'll take Ten Ten as my own once you're dead. You'll do no such thing, he cried the pain of his wound forgotten. What are you going to do about it? Naruto began forming hand seals. Kayubi. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu. He sent a huge ball of demonic flame spiraling towards Sasuke. What in the hell is that? He yelled as he dodged it, the heat from the Jutsu burning his back and melting the sword he carried. Your death. Sasuke formed hand seals again and Naruto began to charge a Rasengan only this time using a version of it he developed. Chidori. He cried still believing he could never lose. Futon. Kayubi. Rasengan. Naruto cried sending forth a blood-red Rasengan that seemed as thought the inner chakra in it was a whirlpool of flame. When these jutsus combined the effect was horrible, for Sasuke at least. The moment that Chidori touched the Rasengan it exploded outwards towards him in that instant his arm was blow off and the winds ripped the flesh from his ribs, one blast came up and grazed his eyes gauging them out. Goodbye Sasuke, burn in hell. That, was, luck, 
Sasuke muttered refusing to accept his defeat, and then he drew his final breath and died. I can still take care of this. Orochimaru yelled and used his freakish neck extending ability to try and bite Naruto, but he got out of the way thanks to the Horishin. Orochimaru now found himself among a pile of dead ninja, his sound nins beaten, hopes at possessing Sasuke destroyed and hopelessly outnumbered. You win this round. Then as Naruto and Itachi charged at him he used a jutsu and escaped. Damn, he got away. Jiraiya muttered. Yay he did Jiraiya but look at it this way. We stopped Sasuke. Well Naruto stopped him and Ten Ten is safe and unharmed. Itachi said. Itachi, can I carry her? Naruto asked. He smiled. Sure Naruto. The he walked over and picked up Sasuke corpse. I can't just leave him here, even if he deserves it. With that the group departed back to Konoha. The image they found when they arrived was something no one could have dreamed of years ago. Kayubi stood in a position that promised pain to enemies while the lead nins gathered their wounded and dead. What do you think they will say about Kayubi defending Konoha? Itachi asked. Dunno, but it will be interesting I bet. Tamari said. Damn straight they better start realizing I'm not the demon. As the group neared the gate the Kayubi noticed them. Nice job with Sasuke Kit. Too bad we didn't get Orochimaru though. I know Kayubi, but the important things is I got her back. I know Kit, take her with you to the Sandame, she doesn't haven't any injuries just knocked out. Why the Sandame? He talked to me for a while then asked that I send you, Jiraiya, Itachi, Tamari, and Ten Ten with you. The group walked slowly through the streets of Konoha examining the damage, Fortunately the reaction had been fast enough and the battle had been confined to the gates and a few streets nearby, the majority of the town was unscathed. They saw wounded carried towards the hospital, which was overflowing with wounded. As they entered the Hokage Tower everyone was amazed to see that the guards actually thanked Naruto for his help and led him through. Welcome home everyone, Sandame said, we are back sensei we got 1010, although I am afraid Uchiha Sasuke was killed, trying to stop us. Itachi showed him Sasuke mutilated corpse as proof. Yes, Kayubi informed me of this. He told his story to the village. Moments after he entered the battlefield the tide turned drastically in our favor, the sand and sound nins began to flee and terror others were cut down by our nins or by Kayubi. Overall, our casualties were not as bad as they could have been, very few of our shinobi died, we have a heavy amount of wounded though. Jiraiya, how did they fare in battle? Tamari was brilliant with her fan, 1010 10 before she was struck from behind and knocked out was slaying enemy nins left and right, and Naruto wielded the power of the Kayubi in several jutsus to be honest I'd be afraid to cross them combined. At this the two young nins looked at him like he was crazy. Aero Senen I think you hit you took one too many shots to the head. No I didn't brat, you three are just the best we have had. Naruto, what happened? Came a weak voice from Naruto's arms. Relax 1010, Sasuke betrayed us and captured you. I'm sorry, for what, I wasn't good enough. Relax 1010, it wasn't your fault no one knew Sasuke would turn out that way, so do you want sat down now? Nope, I'm comfortable, she replied and laid her head against Naruto's chest. Well I'm glad you okay, but can we get back on the task at hand? Itachi said. Yay go ahead, Haruno Sakura was killed in the fighting. What how? The three chunins asked. Sasuke murdered her. To gain the Mangekyo, we found her body on the wall a little while ago. Bastard, I'm glad he's dead. I know Naruto. You've all had a rough day why don't you go get some rest? With that they left the Hokage's office. I'm going to go help with cleanup. Jiraiya said. Naruto unsummoned the Kayubi and headed home with the others. Good night you three take care. Itachi said when they reached the road that lead to the house he got since he didn't feel it was right for him to leave in the Uchiha mansion after what happened. When they finally entered Naruto's house the three headed upstairs and collapsed in their beds. Hey Kayubi, yay Kit, why didn't that jutsu Sasuke use affect me? It seems that while you didn't get the full Sharingan, you gained a resistance to the jutsus it can use, possibly other abilities, only time and practice will tell Kit. Night Kayubi. Night Kit, Sasuke hey lazy bastard you're back. Freedom shut up Sasuke, I had a busy couple of days, I had tests in a couple major subjects and two projects to do. Sasuke still no excuse, Freedom Zabuza, Haku, 
Take care of Sasuke for me. Sasuke what? Gets dragged away by Zabuza and Haku. Okay, now as to who Rin was, there is going to be a story to that later on when I get into what happened with Arashi's team. The Rin that was on Kakashi's team is named after the one Arashi married. Kazama Rin saved the life of younger Rin's mother who was her best friend. Later in life when she had a child it was named after her. Kama, the aftermath of the invasion had been something no one could have expected. Some of the villagers now openly feared Naruto, others had finally seen him in the light his father had intended, one of the heroes of the village. It was a calm morning as far as things had been concerned lately the gates had almost been completed in most of the village. Naruto and Ten Ten approached the vast Hyuga main house in order to speak to Hisashi as Arashi had directed, getting past the guards had been easy then just explained they had to talk to Hisashi about something important the guards warning however was that if they tried anything to harm him the Hyuga main and branch houses would both be on them in minutes, needless to say they were scared shitless to touch anything. What are you guys doing here? Hey Neji, we are looking for Hisashi. Why would you need to speak to him? It's important and I can't say right now, sorry. Follow me. Neji lead them through the massive building towards the training grounds around back. The halls were lined with paintings of past Hyuga heads and heroes including Neji's father although they didn't know it yet, the training grounds around back was massive it was at least twice the size of training ground 7. These two are here to see you Hisashi. Thank you Neji. Neji then left them alone. So Uzumaki Naruto, and Ten Ten. You're the last people I would have expected to see here today what do you need? I've come to talk to you about my family line. Naruto said and handed him Arashi's letter. Oh really? He replied then began to read the letter. The more he read the larger Hisashi's eyes seemed to get, until they were literally the size of the Byakugan on their own and the man seemed in total shock as he finished it. Dear Kami, Naruto can you use the Horishin? Naruto quickly Horishined around the field several times to prove his point. Holy shit, I never would have expected Arashi to have a kid, I mean sure Rin was pregnant but we all thought she and the child died in the fighting. The means that he sealed the Kyubi within his own son. He did, only one of us could withstand the force of the demon sealing. Naruto said with a sad smile and Ten Ten held his hand helping with explain all of it. Why haven't you told everyone about this Naruto? They felt it would be too much of a threat to my safety to have me go by my name all my life due to my father's enemies. Although I'd love to see the villagers faced if they knew I was the son of the Yandaimi. Hisashi laughed, wouldn't we all? Hisashi, can you tell me some things about my parents? Another time Naruto, I'm afraid I have to be getting to a clan meeting soon, if it's alright with you I'd like to inform the elders of your true name. Hell yes. I don't want my past hidden I just wish the old man would announce my true name and heritage to everyone. Then it's settled, have a good day you two. As the two left the mansion's gates they were spotted by none other than Jiraiya. Hey brats, come on we need to get to the Hokage Tower. Aero Senen what could be that unimportant they had to send you. It's very important, important enough to send the one person that could be more easily distracted than Kiba by a pet shop. 1010 added in. Shut up you two, I think we win Naruto. Looks like it, man that was pathetic Aero Senen isn't in it today. The were made their way across rooftops towards the Hokage's tower upon entering it they were amazed by the guards letting with pass without a problem one even told them good afternoon. When they entered into the office they found Tamari waiting for them. Sensei, I found them. Good, now we can get down to business. I would like you four to go and track down my next successor, Tsunade. At this Jiraiya paled. Sensei, you know what she likes to do to me. I know Jiraiya, that's why you have a team one to talk to her and the other two to drag you out of the wall you are stuck in. Tsunade was last seen with two others somewhere in sand country. Any ideas why they are in sand? My guess what she does best, fleeing for debt collectors. Everyone expects Serutobi and Jiraiya's sweat dropped. Let me get this straight we are going after a Senen with a gambling problem. Aero Senen was anyone in your group even close to normal I mean seriously a pervert, a power crazed pedophile, and a gambler. Ten Ten smacked him over the head. Naruto, Tsunade is one of the greatest kunoichi of all time show some respect. She scolded him. So, Aero Senen is one of the best to and look at him. Good point, 
Tamari who had been remaining quiet most of the time surprisingly spoke up. Guy, I don't think we are exactly normal either. So, I don't know I just thought I'd point it out. This mission will count as an A class and will pay as such. Sarutobi spoke up. When do we leave? Within the hour gather what you need and meet me at the gate. The three took off to get what they needed. So sensei, he is going by Kazama now, do you plan on telling the village the truth about him? Yes, I have called a meeting for just after he leave, surprisingly Hayuga Hasashi has agreed to help out with everything. Do you think Naruto has talked to him already about their clan's alliance? It would seem as thought he was, also with the way he is going he has the remains of clan Uchiha behind him for sure and I'd be willing to bet there are others. Kids, got power both physically and politically that it. Exactly, he council may begin to consider him a threat soon. But that would result in him being killed. Jiraiya yelled. No, I believe it would lead to a civil war in Konoha between the group behind Naruto and the group with the council and the council probably won't win. I know they won't, if Tsunade returns they can count on her being behind the boy all the way as will I. I'd be sorry for even Orochimaru if he ended up against half of what the council can stir up. Quote, what do you mean? Imagine the sheer power all that group with Naruto would posses plus the Kyubi. Poor bastards wouldn't stand a chance. Jiraiya said then headed towards the window. Well, I have to go meet up with those guys, see you when I return sensei. Good luck Jiraiya. Several hours later, the group was safely out of Konoha and the ninja of Konoha had gathered in the town center at the command of the Sandame. Good evening everyone I imagine you all are wondering why I have called you here tonight. At this chorus of yes rang out through the crowd. I would like to know where everyone stands on Uzumaki Naruto. Cries of kill the demon and other things rang out all over the place but were quickly silenced by a maddening amount of killing intent courtesy of the Aburame, Akamichi, Nara, Inazuka, and Hyuga clans, along with the Yamanaka family, Rock Lee, Uruka, Itachi, Gai, Kurunai, and Kakashi. Several of the weaker nins fainted at the amount others lost control of bodily functions and everyone saying bad things about him found themselves unable to speak in total fear. Okay, so everyone that wishes to kill the other please explain you opinions before I have to call a clean-up crew. Uzumaki has done nothing to us and proven he isn't what the others take him for, for that the Aburames support him. Shino's father said, similar things were said by each of the other clans. He was one of my students and prove who he was to me. Kakashi said, Naruto, is just a genin to the leaf he has never done anything truly wrong. Kurunai said, Lee, told the group that he chose to support his eternal rival and Ino's family told everyone that they could see no traces of the problems everyone felt in his mind and he was as normal as them. It is good to see he has some friends within this village but tonight I shall explain the truth about what happened the night of the Kyubi attack. What do you mean the truth? Ino yelled at him. That night when the Yondaimi went to fight the Kyubi, he took a small child with him and performed a seal at the cost of his own life to seal the enraged demon into a child, that child was Uzumaki Naruto. The younger children gasped. Sandame is he the demon? Hanabi asked. No, he is the jailer of the Kyubi no Kitsune, he stopped it from destroying everything and everyone. More than that thought the night it was sealed Naruto's mother died in the collapse of the hospital and his father died heroically in battle. The group hung on the Sandame's every word some of the girls of the group cried slightly for the pain their friend had endured. His father died to save everyone. The Sandame continued. Sandame, you cannot mean that his father was. Naruto's father was Kazama Urashi better known as the Yondaimi Hokage. Naruto is the last Kazama alive today the heir to his father's legacy and the Kazama family as it is his true name. A shocked silence overtook most everyone after this, along with the guilt that most of them had mistreated the sole child of the greatest hero the village ever had. Kakashi was shocked for other reasons. His sensei's child was Naruto, the same Naruto he had failed to teach properly. He is still the demon. It's all lies. A bunch of the villagers yelled. If any of you so much as attempt to harm him you can count on the Hyuga clan being against you. Hisashi threatened. Same for me, Itachi said. Us too, yelled Shino and his father speaking for their clan. The Inazukas yelled their support and their dogs howled in a blood-curdling agreement. Followed by Kakashi, Kurunai, Lee, and Ino's family. 
This meeting is over you may return to you homes. With that the group disbanded leave only Naruto's supporters remaining who chose to move to the Hyuga mansion and discuss everything further. By the end of this night only one thing was certain, change was happening within the hidden leaf. The group had traveled on throughout the course of several weeks now. Tsunade as it turned out wasn't very good at hiding her movements she left a trail of gambling debts, perverts punched her hit with empty sake bottles, and broken windows and walls. Rumors also had it that she had been traveling with two other medic nins she was apparently teaching. They know where in a small village on the outskirts of fire country preparing to search another bar. Are we looking for a senin or a missing nin? Tamari asked. To tell ya the truth I'm not sure anymore Tamari. All the places she goes remind me of where hunter nins go to find their prey. Naruto replied. Focus you too this is important. Jiraiya scolded just then a man came sailing out of the wall of the bar and across town. I think we found her. Tamari muttered sarcastically. Damn, I was hoping she lightened up over the years. Jiraiya said as he gathered her courage and walked in. Inside the bar there was a lot of unruly and dangerous looking people even by ninja standards. At a table on the back sat three women, one appeared to be in her twenties with blonde hair and amber eyes, the second about the same with black hair, black eyes, holding a pig, finally the last appeared to be Kakashi's age she had a large dog beside her and from appearance could be mistaken as an older Inazuka Hana. Jiraiya calmed walked towards them and the other three followed unsure of what else to do. Hello Tsunade, Jiraiya, it's been a while to what do I owe this? Sensei asked that I come and find you. We would like to ask you to take up the post as the Gondime. No Jiraiya I want, why not? Because becoming Hokage is a fool's job everyone dies because of it, Sensei is the oldest so far the others have all died in the line of duty. It means nothing and is only a fool's goal. What, who the hell do you think you are? Becoming Hokage isn't a fool's job, and it's a lifelong goal and honor to become it. I will someday just like my father before me. Naruto yelled then stormed out 1010 and Tamari chasing after their friend trying to get him to calm down. Jiraiya, who was that kid? He seemed so familiar. That Tsunade was Kazama Naruto, Arashi's first and only son. What do you mean he's Arashi's son? Arashi's son died before he could even breathe Jiraiya. She yelled rising up to attack him. No, Arashi's son was born on October 10th, the night of the Kyubi's assault. Arashi sealed the Kayubi in his own flesh and blood Tsunade, Arashi's son lives to this day. Tsunade fell back into her chair in shock. So then Sensei's son is alive? The girl with the dog asked. Sensei's. Holy shit, Rin is that you? Yay it is, how is everyone back home? We were attacked by Orochimaru several days ago, the invasion was pushed back thanks to Naruto and Kayubi. In battle Naruto held up to his father's name and has begun to form his own, he slew the traitor Uchiha Sasuke and rescued his girlfriend. Then attempted to attack Orochimaru alongside of Uchiha Itachi. He's grown up well hasn't he Jiraiya? Yes, he's like his father in so many ways of long since lost count. I'm going back Tsunade, I want, no I need to go back, Naruto was to be my godson according to Sensei and Kakashi was to be his godfather. I must do this for myself and for sensei. Rin told her then got up and followed Naruto and the others. How can you be so sure the boy is Arashi's son? Sensei knew it for a long time, Arashi asked him to look after his son and see that he was okay. By the time I found out you, Shizun, and Rin had all left. What's his story I doubt the village took him to well. No they didn't for the most part. An Anbu captain that knew the truth watched over Naruto in his early years. He was Ten Ten's father then when they were still young both Ten Ten's parents died and the two went out on their own. They began to train and practice what they knew growing stronger all the time. The night after the genin exams sensei gave Naruto his family scrolls, he learned the Horishin basics and has since mastered the bloodline itself. He has a summoning contract with the Kayubi who Orochimaru tricked into attacking Konoha by murdering his family. The genin team he was put on consisted on Ten Ten. Naruto, and Sasuke their sensei was Hitaki Kakashi. First C rank mission became a B rank when their client was attacked by missing Nin hired by a businessman to kill him. During the battle 1010 took what was thought to be a fatal needle hit and went into a fake death right before him. 
Naruto became so pissed off he drew his katana and awakened the power of the Kyubi. The chakra was there in such a mass it changed the sword into a jagged demonic katana. He then used the Horishin and killed the offending Nin, while Kakashi and Sasuke killed the other. When they returned I took them under my wing and began to teach them. By this time Naruto and Ten Ten are dating by the way. They each have learned the Rasengan and Naruto has mastered many of Arashi and his clan's moves. Damn. The kids have had hard lives and major problems. And it may get worse. How so? If the council replaces Sensei Dyu to his death with someone of their choice since he cannot find a successor that could be the end of Naruto or at least his exile from Konoha. Damn it Jiraiya, that settles it I'm going back. I thought you said it was a fool's job. That may be but I'm not going to abandon Arashi's son out there to those heartless bastards. Jiraiya just smirked. You planned that didn't you? Yep. Meanwhile, um hi, Rin nervously said to the group of Chunins. You're one of Tsunade's group, what come to say more about what happened? Hardly, I don't feel the way she goes I came to talk to you, Naruto. Rin softly spoke. About what, I want to tell you some things about the past and my sensei, your father. You were on my father's team. Yay, I'll start in the beginning. My name is Inazuka Rin. This is my dog. Obito named after a comrade who died in battle at the same time my old dog died. My genin team was Hitaki Kakashi, Uchiha Obito, and myself, our sensei was Kazama Arashi, the future Yandaimi Hokage. I trained as a medic nin under Tsunade after I let Konoha out of pain. I had seen too many loved ones die I had to get away. Naruto, Arashi asked long ago if I would be your godmother. At this she tears formed in her eyes. I didn't know you survived or I would have been there, I should have, if you hate me for it I understand. It's okay, I understand that one. My father died, you assumed I was gone, and a lot of others had died the night of the Kyubi's assault. Thank you, Rin cried out the hug the unsuspecting boy as she dissolved into tears. Rin, yay Naruto, can you tell me some stories or anything about my parents? Sure thing kiddo. Your mother was one of the prettiest women in the Uchiha clan, she had long black hair down to her waist and was known for her skill as an assassin. When they were twelve my mother and yours were in battle. My mother was about to die, when your mother saved her life, mine never forgot that and I was named after your mother. Your dad was one of the kindest men I ever met, I'm sure you know about his exploits as the yellow flash, but he was more than that he became like a second father to my team and held us together the day Obito died. That's when Kakashi gained his Sharingan eye and his nickname is Sharingan Kakashi, that is actually the eye of Obito. So that's what they were like huh? Just a touch on the surface Naruto, there was a lot of both of them. I've never really heard much about my mom though, all I got was dad's letter the day I moved into the mansion. Hey, if I had a godmother who was my godfather. The other surviving member of my team Kakashi, although I doubt he knows you're alive. Oh man that lazy pervert is my godfather. Lazy pervert. He is always about two hours late to anything and sits there reading Jiraiya's perverted books all the time. Kakashi when I get my hands on you, you're going to wish I would have stayed gone and so are your kids. Naruto slowly backed away from Rin as she started to rant. So Naruto what is this I hear about you having a girlfriend? At this Naruto and Ten Ten turned crimson red, and Tamari burst out laughing at her friend's expressions. Ah so this is her huh? You've got good tastes in girls Naruto, just remember no kids until you're married okay. At this they turned even brighter red if that was possible and Tamari fell over laughing. Jiraiya and Tsunade were watching them by this point. It's good to see Rin find something she cares about again, I wonder what she'll do to Kakashi though since he's another victim of your novels. Hopefully nothing he's one of my best customers. Now if you need me I need to use the bathroom. You're going peeping around you. Um, wrong answer. And with that Jiraiya went flying through the air to come back down and land in a crater. Comma, Obito. Finally something good happens to them. Arashi. Yay, plus my son's got a girlfriend. Obito. Sweat drops sensei that happened a long time ago. Arashi. Yay but I couldn't talk then. Sakura. What happened to Sasuke? Author. Temporarily not here. Sasuke screams in the background. Sasuke. Help. He stuck me in a room with Orochimaru and Shukaku. Everyone. Sweat drops. 
The team sent to get Tsunade approached the gates of Konoha noticing the Anbu on patrol as usual and almost no signs of the battle remained. Halt! Who goes there? An Anbu in a white dog mask asked them. Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Senens, Inazuka Rin, Ten Ten, Tamari, and Kazama Naruto. Jiraiya spoke. Ah hello Jiraiya. Sorry I didn't realize it was you. Open the gate. With that the massive city gate swung open allowing them entrance. So we're to Aero Senen? Hokage's office, and stop calling me Aero Senen. But you are an Aero Senen, I agree. Ten Ten added. Now there's two of them. Tsunade and Rin were laughing at the exchange. That happen often? Tsunade asked Tamari on the way to the Hokage's office. Yay, at least once a day when we are all together. At the entrance to the Hokage's tower both of the guards merely nodded their heads in respect to each of the members as they passed. That was odd. Naruto whispered to Ten Ten, yay it was. Jiraiya then opened the door to the Sandame's office and they entered. Jiraiya, judging by the fact Tsunade is with you I'd say your mission was a success. Yes sensei we, Sarutobi sensei why the hell was Naruto's heritage kept a secret? Tsunade exploded. Because we feared assassins on the young boy. So you let us believe he was dead, damn well considerate of you. I didn't know my godson was alive for all that time. Sensei's child and you didn't say anything to us. Rin joined in as the other four in the room just stared as Serutobi was losing this battle. Tsunade, Rin calm down I did what I thought was best. There's you first damned mistake, what you thought was best. We should have been with him. Thank God Ten Ten was or who knows what would have happened to him. Rin exploded further as her dog growled at the old man. If it helps you any we had a meeting the night Naruto left over how the council and village acts and Naruto's past. How did that turn out did you screw me over there? Naruto exploded. No, Naruto the Hyuga, Aburame and Inazuka clans have allied with you and declared their support behind you and recognized you as the Yandaimi's son and heir. Along with them Kakashi, Kurenai, Ino's family, and several others have voiced their support along with Uchiha Itachi. In other words if the council were to act they would without a doubt be slaughtered or at least cause a major fight. Don't forget about Tsunade, Shizun, Rin, and myself, Jiraiya added. Me too. Ten Ten threw in, same for me, Tamari added. Naruto I believe you will find exactly what is going on at your clan house I recommend going there to see. Serutobi told him and with that the three left headed towards his house. Are you seriously sensei? They actually have accepted him as what he is? Tsunade asked. Yay, even the younger ones understand it. Sandame, where can I find Kakashi? Rin asked. Probably around the ninja memorial, he goes there to speak to Obito and Arashi every day now. Rin quietly left headed towards the ninja memorial. Now Tsunade as for you becoming the Gondam do you accept? Yes, but I would like to do a little bit of work around the village plus train Naruto and his team first. Fair enough. Naruto's house upon entering into the Kazama mansion they found a scroll on the front table. Naruto carefully opened it and scrolled over at his face going into shock as he read. Naruto, are you okay? Ten Ten asked, yay I'm fine. Just shocked that's all. Well what's it say? Naruto began to read it off. Dear Kazama Naruto, your actions over the years have proven your worth taught his village despite the past remarks of the council and other villagers. Our clans have chosen should you accept it to ally with Clan Kazama and defend its remaining members. This would include yourself, your girlfriend, and your teammate Tamari. In the event of an attack upon you by the council we will stand ready to fight against any and all enemy ninja forces, we own your father and you for the loads each of you have taken for this village. Those of us not within a larger clan would like to offer our support as well, we shall fight and if you choose it act as guards to the Kazama lands, the three people for this job would be Kurenai. Kakashi, and Uchiha Itachi due to them having no clan or living family in the Uchiha's blood ties to the Kazama clan. Sincerely the clan heads and members, Clan Hyuga. Clan Inazuka clan Aburame clan Nara clan Akamichi. Clan Serutobi the Yamanaka family Rock Lee Iruka. Uchiha Itachi made a guy Hitaki Kakashi Yuhi Kurenai. Holy shit, Tamari said in shock well, Naruto, Serutobi, is that the Sandames clan? Ten Ten asked. I think so, that doesn't surprise me though isn't his son one of the Junin senseis? I think so but I've never met him personally. 
Well what do you guys want to do? Why are you asking us? They asked him, because 1010 is my girlfriend and Tamari you kind of like a sister in a way so what are your opinions? I say go for it. 1010 said, I agree on this one. Then it's settled, we need to write a response I guess. Kakashi and Rin, Obito. How badly have I messed up? He was sensei's son all along and I never knew it I never saw the signs. I mean for the love of Kami they look alike in some ways especially as he is getting older. You're right Kakashi you should have known and I should have been here as well. Kakashi's eyes widened in disbelief as he turned to face the speaker. R. Rin? Hello Kakashi. How have you been? She said coming closer to him. I thought you were dead, he said his mask slipping slightly and for once in recent times Kakashi's eyes showed with emotion. You messed up Kakashi. I know Rin, and I'm going to fix it I'm taking up a post as a guard on at the Kazama house plus I'm going to try to make amends with Naruto, if I would have known then what I do now things would have been different Rin. I know Kakashi, I know. Rin sighed, it's nice to have you back Rin. It's good to be back in some ways Kakashi, some? Still many memories around here but also friends. Yay, a lot has happened over the years. I've heard you're a pervert now Kakashi. That's just a misunderstanding I swear. Kakashi said quickly on the defensive but when he moved a familiar orange book fell out of his pocket. Rin's eye twitched with anger. Um Rin be reasonable. Kakashi, you idiot. Then charged at him for the next hour Kakashi's screams of agony rang out across the village. At the Hokage's office Serutobi just looked out his window. It seems things are finally going to get interesting around here, change will happen soon. The morning following the group's return to Konoha, found Naruto and Ten Ten passed out at a table Naruto with his head in his arms and Ten Ten was laying up against him, with the letter they were writing in front of them, Tamari was on a couch just a few feet away sprawled out and asleep. This was the sight that greeted Kakashi, Rin, and Itachi as they walked into the house. Rin sighed softly, so much rests on their shoulders. I know, but at least they have each other, Itachi added. And us, think we should wake them. Kakashi finished. Nah. Let them sleep, they were probably up late working on that paper in front of them. Rin whispered to the group getting a nod from each of the men, the group then quietly moved into the kitchen away from the sleeping trio. He's so much like his father. Rin softly spoke while they got drinks. I know Rin, I had to have been blind to miss it all. Damn straight Kakashi. Who asked you Itachi? No one I just felt left out. At this an uncomfortable silence overtook the group. So. When do you think Naruto and Tenten's first kid will be along? Itachi asked breaking the ice. This one question made Rin freeze and Kakashi choke on his drink. After a moment Rin began to make food for everyone including the kids. Kakashi seemed to stop and think about this one for a moment. Well if he's anything like his old man then a couple of years I'd guess. So, what do you think Arashi would say about all this? Honestly I think he would be proud of his son. He's grown up in a village that hated him and never lost his path, he has found love this early, united some of the strong clans by his actions, brought the last true Uchiha back, got Tsunade back, and is part of a team with a sand nin that is headed towards becoming the next Senin team. Rin told the two men who were seemingly lost and thought themselves. I'll agree on that he is Sensei's son, Kakashi finally spoke. Hey Itachi, aren't you his cousin or something? Rin asked. Come to think of it yay I am. Just then three barely awake kids walked into the room with a life that would make a zombie seem like a hyper three year old. Good morning you three how are you this morning? Rin cheerily asked them as she laid the food out. Hokage's office life was boring for the new Gondam, Tsunade had discovered the joys of paperwork and was becoming very good at avoiding it already. Serutobi was standing beside the desk, the old man had taken it upon himself to help Tsunade. Tsunade herself was getting pissed beyond reason as she found out today the bulk the new paperwork was reports of a pervert with white hair peeping on women, at this she made a vow to harm Jiraiya in ways that made even Serutobi pain at the thought of it. Some of the older reports stated things about Orochimaru's movements and apparent progress in some areas, namely around the sound village due to him being the leader. He's the leader of that place, big friggin surprise he is there. Tsunade muttered and threw the paper aside. Serutobi just sighed, he had a lot of progress to make with Tsunade. Shizune had taken over at the hospital as the second medic to only Tsunade herself needless to say, that place was getting a major renovation in practice and conduct. 
No one noticed the massive thunderstorm brewing outside, that nature of the storm itself was almost unnatural. Somewhere within the village of Sound Seven Nin were tied up, Orochimaru himself now stood before this group gloating. Today is the day you witness my greatest creation, as each of you die today your life forces will meld and restore several people of my choice to this plane of existence. Today is the day the Shinigami loses. Orochimaru then began to perform a series of hand seals and as he did the bindings seemed to glow around each of the prisoners, all the time a large storm building. The Orochimaru stopped and activated his kinjutsu. The ropes seemed to cut into the people tied up their blood ran around them forming a circle around the area. Orochimaru himself stood back and watched as the area burst into blood red flames a pillar of the flames rose and struck Orochimaru, at first his screams of agony filled the air. Then as the flames began to die down Orochimaru burst into maniacal laughter. He now appeared to have blood red eyes, his clothes had changed to all black with a black cloak with the symbol of sound on them, before him three figures kneeled. Rise my greatest warriors, you time on this earth isn't done. Welcome to the sound I am your leader, the one who has restored each of you to life, with a few changes of course. At this three figures dressed in black cloaks rose from the ashes of the scorched ground curse seals visible on their necks. Two of which appear to be young, the third was a tall man, carrying a large sword. Your powers are at their strongest, we must begin to plan and train my warriors, come we have an army to build. With that Orochimaru and the three people walked into the driving reins. Konoha, Naruto's house Naruto, Ten Ten, Tamari, Rin, Kakashi, and Itachi sat at a table watched the horrific storm begin to build. Something is wrong. Itachi muttered worriedly. Then Itachi's fears became confirmed as a bolt of pure black lightning struck before them, as it faded, the image of the Shinigami dressed in a pure black armor that seemed to absorb the light, a massive sword on its belt, and a warrior's mask covering its face. The group froze in shock and horror as the death god loamed before them. Kazama Naruto, I have come for you. It bellowed out in a deep thunderous get in front of Naruto except for Ten Ten who grabbed her boyfriend and held him close. You'll need to get through us first, Itachi shouted, his voice masking the fear he felt knowing he would never win. All was still save for the rain and thunder then the Shinigami began to laugh. I have not come to take him, his time is far from over, and I have need of all of you. Why us? Rin asked terrified, the one you call Orochimaru has discovered how to revive the dead, and has used it to revive several of the most powerful evil men of recent times, they also posses his curse seal, and to make matters worse Orochimaru absorbed a small fraction of my power, he is now unable to die save in battle. In sense he has gained eternal life with one flaw, it can be robbed by him taking a mortal wound. Why can't you stop him? Naruto asked clutching Ten Ten to him. A side effect of that ritual prevents me from going near any of those four unless they are at death's gate. All four of them have now cheated death, and you know how I feel about this. This information slowing sank into the people present. I accept. Naruto told the death god finding his courage, and then very slowly they all joined in. I thank you, I am sending several people back to even the flow out, and we can't let those four go unchecked. Also when it comes time for the final battle I myself will come forth to fight. Then the death god seemed to turn to smoke and disappears, leaving only the storm to forebodingly signal what was to come. Who do you think he is sending to help us? Tamari asked. Us. The group turned and there standing within the door stood three people. The youngest seemed to be the same age as Naruto, he looked similar to Sasuke and Itachi only he appeared happier, he was dressed in a blue shirt, with grey pants. The second a woman in her early twenties with flowing black hair, and dark eyes, she was dressed in a kimono that was blood red and loose fitting, along her belt was a sword. Then the last was a man, he needed no introduction to anyone. Obito, Kakashi cried out in shock, Rin, Itachi muttered looking at the young women before him. F, father. Naruto said in shock. Okay, I apologize on that one, I know it confused people but the Rin that I had Itachi mention was Kazama Rin. Naruto's mother but I plan on having it so she dropped her Uchiha given name when she left the clan. Both groups just stared at each other, the tensions and emotions so thick it was nearly visible in the air. Then Jiraiya and Tsunade ran into the room because they had witnessed the Shinigami, and then froze in their tracks. Tsunade. What the hell was in the sake? Jiraiya asked looking back and forth between Naruto and Arashi. Nothing was done Ero Senin. We are just back from the dead. 
Irashi spoke for the first time. How? Tsunade asked in shock herself. Orochimaru revived several dead people and tampered with his own mortality, we have been revived to make up for his actions. Obito spoke. So, who is everyone? Tamari asked clearly confused. Irashi laughed, the girl from Sand I guess you don't know us. I am Kazama Irashi, Yandaimi Hokage, Yellow Flash of Konoha, and Naruto's father. I am Kazama Kikyu, formerly Uchiha Rin, Naruto's mother. And I am Uchiha Obito, former teammate of Kakashi and Inazuka Rin, student of Arashi. I died in the Rock Leaf War while saving Kakashi's sorry ass. Very slowly motion began to return to the room and the shock of everything faded. Mom? Dad? Naruto asked almost cautiously. At this Kikyu crossed the room and hugged her son. Hello Naruto. She whispered softly to him, the Arashi slowly came over but he wasn't sure what to do him. Ten Ten nervously walked up behind Naruto. So this is my son's love huh? Arashi asked while Naruto and Ten Ten blushed and acted nervously about what Arashi might say. Chill out I want bite. What do you think I'm gonna go tell you off? You two have been on your own long enough besides, it seems like Naruto has good tastes in women. We might not have been able to be here but that doesn't mean we didn't see what was happening. Arashi grinned. So you're actually the Yandaimi? Ten Ten asked, yup, but I guess that doesn't matter much since Tsunade is the Gondam now. I can still go and torment the old man though. At this Kikyu smacked Arashi over the head. Leave the Sandame alone, you idea of fun would probably give him a heart attack, she scolded him. Then her own eyes seemed to dance with mischief, so tell me you too, when can I expect my grandchildren huh? Naruto and Ten Ten started sputtering and trying to answer while everyone else was laughing at the couple's expense. Obito, I'm sorry about what happened, you should have just let me die. No Kakashi, it wasn't the way I wanted things. If you would have gone down I would never have allowed myself to be forgiven for what happened. But you died Obito. I know Kakashi, and I never regretted it once. Rin came over and drew both of her former teammates into a hug. Welcome back Obito. So Arashi, do you really want to be the Yandaimi again? I can always go back and take over at the hospital. No thanks Tsunade. I think I'll take the time for now to be with everyone and train. I've missed enough of my son's life. Tsunade just smiled at him, I understand, welcome back Arashi. Hey R. I mean Kikyu, Obito, I'm sorry but most of our clan is dead. We know Itachi, we saw what happened, and it isn't your fault. Kikyu answered. Yay besides what kind of person would I be if I was the total last Uchiha in that branch of the family, it'd be friggin lonely in the place. Obito added in. You're sure you're a Uchiha? Yup. I know, Obito is a bit outspoken. Kikyu told him. No shit, the kid is like a Uchiha version of Naruto. Scary, Irashi, Obito, and Naruto, I thought Tsunade is going to have her hands full. Jiraiya joked. Well it's getting late guys, why don't we all turn in? Kikyu suggested. Naruto and Ten Ten exchanged glances and grinned as they went to leave. Hey mom? Yay? About those kids, well get right on it, with that they took off down the hall. What? She could be heard yelling followed by the laughter of Arashi, Naruto, Ten Ten, Tamari, and Itachi, the others just shook their heads. What has the Shinigami done? Not only do I have Naruto, I have an older version of him too. Tsunade muttered. They grow on you over time. Kikyu said her surprise and shock abating. Naruto's room the two collapsed onto the bed laughing. Oh man that was priceless, Naruto said laughing. I know, did you see the look on your dad's face? Yay good thing mom didn't look like pride, he laughed harder. I think out lives got more interesting. Yay, I mean seriously why would I want kids with you, Ten Ten joked. Hey are you saying I'm bad? Naruto joked back at her. Nope, I'm just saying you're not good enough. I'm hurt. Naruto said faking tears, Ten Ten just laughed and ed her boyfriend. You know I love you, even if you're an idiot. This coming from the one that has an unnatural obsession with pointy objects? Hey never insult the weapons, she said and Naruto lay down. Ten Ten just laid on him then went to sleep after he wrapped his arm around her. Kikyu and Arashi just looked at them from the door. He grew up well for not having us around. Arashi whispered to his wife. I know. He even has a good girlfriend surprisingly. Yay, 
He definitely got that from me. Don't flatter yourself. She laughed then they left to find a room to sleep in. Meanwhile Kakashi, Rin, and Obito stayed downstairs catching up, while Jiraiya and Tsunade headed to the Hokage Tower to discuss what had happened and plan out what to do. Unbeknownst to them in Wave Country a certain sword had vanished. Sand Gara stared into the night, somewhat was horribly wrong he could feel it. Shukaku what is going on? Something bad kid, I can sense it. I can tell, it has you on edge. Yes, I sense trouble, something horrible is coming to us, and we need to get to Konoha. Why Konoha? We need to speak to the Kayubi's vessel. You mean Naruto? Yay, that's his name isn't it? Yes, alright, let's get going we don't have much time to waste. With that Gara began to ride towards Konoha on the sand as fast as he could go. Whatever had Shukaku on edge couldn't be good. Behind him watching from the shadows was a shark-like man, with a sword, who seemed to follow them while carefully hiding his presence and chakra. Sound Orochimaru now stood in front of his three revived nins. I have a mission for you too, he said pointing at the swordsman and a second one. I would like you to go and gather supporters from the village hidden in the clouds. Then he turned to the third one. Go and gather support from the village hidden in the sand, look for Baki. With that they left. Excellent, everything is going according to plan. Everyone had been awake only a few minutes and in that time Arashi and Naruto had gotten into a ramen eating contest of all things. Kikyu and Ten Ten just laughed at the two men's antics as they shoveled bowls of ramen into their mouths, while everyone else that didn't know the metabolism and legendary bottomless pit of the Kazama stomach just stared in pure amazement. Forty old man. Naruto said while they got more ramen from the cupboards. Well see who wins Naruto. Arashi said with a grin. Anyone else think we might need to go shopping for food after this? Kikyu sighed. Naruto? Arashi asked, yay. After this want to go outside and spar? I need some practice and I want to see how good you are. You're on. And so it was several minutes in a tied ramen contest later Arashi and Naruto entered the practice field behind the house, followed by Ten Ten and Kikyu who decided to watch. Show me what you can do kid. Arashi yelled at he took his stance on one side of the field. Trust me I will. Naruto replied, as he got ready to fight himself. Both seemed to stay there for a moment then a single leaf fell between the two and they rushed forwards. Arashi struck first attempting to punch Naruto in the face, but he dodged and landing a punch on Arashi's stomach. Arashi recoiled in seconds and with a kick sent Naruto back several feet. Naruto drew several kanai and tossed them at Arashi, who skillfully deflected each of the kanai with one of his own. Arashi smirked. Time to take this up a notch. Arashi activated the Hiraishin followed by Naruto who activated his as well. Ten Ten and Kikyu had trouble keeping with the massive speed of the attacks, to them it seemed like two yellow blurs locked in combat, neither gaining an inch. Then they seemed to break away and come out of the Hiraishin on each side of the field. Both began to form hand seals then in an instant things really heated up. Kachiyose no Jutsu, two large plumes of smoke rose covering the area, Ten Ten grinned, it's over for Arashi. How do you figure? They both summoned the bosses of their contracts I believe. So, your point is? Gamabunta versus Kayubi. Oh shit, we might want to move back. Then the smoke cleared away Arashi stood atop Gamabunta with an Anbu katana that he carried drawn, Naruto atop the Kayubi his own sword drawn. Kayubi and Gamabunta charged each other fighting brutally, while Arashi and Naruto jumped from their heads and met in midair sword to sword. The duel raged almost in two parts, the summons fighting and their masters dueling under them. Naruto parried a strike and kicked Arashi in the face, sending the older man across the field. Arashi bounced back almost immediately pausing only to wipe some blood away from his mouth and nose, then rushed forward and seemed to gather chakra within his sword in the form of wind. Naruto saw the blow and jumped to get away from it. Big mistake. Arashi swung around and then called out his jutsu. Katana. Rasengan, Arashi called out then the chakra wind seemed to shoot from the blade in massive tendrils of wind followed by the main body of the attack which was a hurricane force wind, only Arashi had dubbed it down so it wasn't a lethal shot. The attack struck Naruto dead on, blasting him hard tearing some of his clothes and cutting his skin badly then he fell to the ground slammed his back. It's over, Arashi said, not yet old man, Naruto shot back up and readied one of his own attacks his katana glowing crimson red, with electric pulses coming off it. 
Irashi tried to block the attack but some of the lightning carried down his blade and shocked him, causing him to drop the blade. Naruto rushing forward striking Arashi several times, drawing blood and inflicting a good bit of injury to Arashi. Then, Kayubi. Katana bolt. A massive bolt of blood red lightning shot off of Naruto's sword and connected with Arashi, sending his spiraling across the field where he landed in a smoking mess. Both of the girls winced, that looked like it hurt. Tsunade is gonna have a field day with this one, Ten Ten muttered. Both of the summons disappeared due to their summons injuries and chakra depletion. Arashi rose for once final attack a familiar blue sphere in his right hand, Naruto matched the attack. Then ran forward and each left loose a Rasengan when the attacks collided it sparked a massive explosion of wind and smoke accompanied by a deafening roar. When the smoke cleared, Arashi stood leaning against his sword he had picked up for support and Naruto lay unconscious. Looks like I win, good job though son. Arashi's eyes rolled up into his head and he passed out. Ten Ten and Kikyu ran over and checked on them. Naruto please be okay, Ten Ten thought. Come on we need to get them to the hospital. Kikyu told her, Kakashi had come out to see what had happened. Kakashi, go and get Tsunade to the hospital. Kikyu yelled with that the two girls took off with Naruto and Arashi to the hospital. Hospital? Okay so what in the hell happened to those two? Tsunade asked after she had finished working on them. Believe it or not what you saw was the leftovers of a spar between Arashi and Naruto, Kikyu said. A spar, between them, who won? Arashi did, then collapsed moments after, it was close though Naruto had Arashi on the ropes the whole match it was even and he didn't even use the fox's chakra. Tsunade stood there in shock. So then he's as strong as Arashi. It gets better. How? I watched Ten Ten and Tamari spar this morning. They were easily past myself and Ten Ten is close to Naruto in normal strength. I was unable to tell what Temuri's skill and strength was but probably close to it. So they are the next Senen like Jiraiya thought. Personally I believe Naruto will make Hokage someday at the rate he is going. That would make Arashi prouder than he already is of Naruto and me as well. What about Ten Ten? What about her? I can see no one else better for my son than her. At this Tsunade nodded. She is still in there with him, pretty worried about him. Doesn't surprise me I'd be amazed if she wasn't. Kikyu nodded and got up to walk into Arashi's room. Oh Tsunade one last thing. Yay, their swordsmanship is easily at or beyond the seven swordsmen of the mist. With that bombshell dropped she walked away. Naruto's room. Ten Ten sat beside his bed looking at her bandaged love. Naruto, wake up please be okay. Ten Ten said as she slowly drifted off to sleep and ended up lying on his stomach. Hokage Tower, Jiraiya, it's time we tested a new group. You cannot possibly mean, yes I do, now get your ass in gear. When, next week should be time enough for them to recover. Tsunade they are only chunin. So what, just suck it up and go with it. Kikyu told me today Naruto almost defeated Arashi without Kayubi's chakra, and Ten Ten easily surpasses her. Okay Tsunade, I hope you're right about this. It was dark, rain poured down washing over the homes in the town as two men talked on a street corner. One of them was a member of Orochimaru's senin team, his cloak arranged so you could see no defining parts of his face or body, the other an older man in his fifties with graying hair and scars across his face from years of fighting. Orochimaru's alliance with Mist is complete, this village now stands within the Sound Alliance. The man spoke. Good. What about the ninja of the village? All have sworn alliance and will follow the orders of the Mizukage until death. Excellent. Then the man began to form hand seals. What are you doing? The old man yelled in surprise. You have outlived your usefulness to us. The monk's arm seemed to glow a brilliant electric blue emitting sounds like it was live electricity. No stop. Reikiri, the dark figure yelled as he ran a lightning-like arm through the older man. With that he calmly walked away, leaving the rain to wash the blood of the fallen man away as it ran across the pavement and into a drain. Konoha. It was just past midnight as Gara made his way into Konoha. The city was peaceful and deserted normally this would be a nice sight but he had one problem, he didn't know where to go. If you're looking for Tamari she's at the hospital with Naruto and Ten Ten. A voice spoke from the side. Gara run around startled by this only to find himself face to face with the perverted hermit, Jiraiya himself. Thank you, Jiraiya, no problem kid, 
The rest of his trip was uneventful as he entered the hospital floor where Naruto was he found Tamari asleep just outside the door, with a silver-haired Junin and a black-haired ninja who resembled Sasuke standing guard, well sleeping on guard that is. They all awoke sensing his presence in the room. Gara what are you doing here? Hello Tamari, something is about to happen I felt I was most needed here. Also I have been chosen to aid Konoha and judge if Suna's help will be needed or not. That makes sense. So what have you been up to? This conversation between the two surviving siblings would last well into the night, all the while things from them seemed to get lighter, the rest of the world began to darken slowly. Sound village, have there been any reports on our objective? Orochimaru asked. Yes, Lord Orochimaru, the youngest of his newly dubbed Senen spoke. Mist's alliance has been secured along with Earth's, but I'm afraid Sand and Cloud have chosen to stand by Konoha and our informant in mist. Terminated, as per your orders. Good, and of our soldiers. They have been training non-stop and are being taught as many jutsu and sword styles as possible. Good, I trust they will be at least able to use his style or the basics of it. I can handle it, the man stated as he entered the room, sword still over his back, although he had to duck under the low door so his sword could enter it. Good, Konoha will soon fall. What of the kid? The man asked. He won't be a problem. I hope you're right. Even as they spoke the other younger male in room shuddered at the memory of something. His eyes still haunt me to this day. He muttered. Someplace hidden within a mountain. Uchiha Madera was not having a good day, hell he wasn't having a good month. First his nephew had escaped his observation and reappeared with the Kyubi container, now Kisime was missing. How the hell can you lose a shark man with a weird sword like? Calming himself the Uchiha made a choice, he had to call all remaining members of the Akatsuki together. Next day, the group was called to the Hokage's office as soon as Naruto was released, surprisingly Arashi was included in the summons. Okay you four, I have a mission for you. It's a B rank mission should you choose to accept. Gladly, Arashi spoke, you five are to go to wave country and supply aid against a group of samurai, two chunin are already out there and have requested assistance. Easy enough. The group left the office gathered their supplies and headed out on the journey. Sound. I have a mission for you. Orochimaru spoke to one of his senin, the sword wielder. What is it? Take a small battalion of men and capture wave country. Why? That country is worthless. It will hold from value if we can keep it away from our enemies. Understood. With that he bowed and left. Wave several days later. The six ninja were crouched low waiting for the bandits to make a move, there were easily 50 of them. What's the plan? 1010 asked, use as little chakra as possible, make your attacks count and kill as many as possible. Arashi commanded. Understood. Go. Arashi yelled and the four bolting from cover straight at the enemy. Tamari instantly snapped her fan open and unleashed a devastating blast of air at the enemy, and 1010 opened up with a hail of kanai, as Naruto and Arashi charged into the enemy swords drawn. I bet I can get more of them than you Naruto. You're on old man. Hey I'm not that old. Arashi said as he parried a sword stroke and slashed the offending man across the throat. Things turned ugly from the group went the samurai showed extraordinary speed and skill in their attacks. Naruto was in the middle of fighting one man in a dead drawn out match when a second got behind him and prepared to strike, only to be cut down as 1010 10 lodged a kunai in an important place then struck him in the head killing him. When it was all said and done all fifty opponents lay dead upon the bloodied earth, their bodies to become food for the wolves as the four six to their hotel unaware of the fight the next day would bring. So Shikamaru, Ino, why didn't you two handle those guys? It was too troublesome. Next day, the six nins were preparing to leave the village then on the horizon the image of a small band of men carrying the battle flag of the sound army began to move towards the city. Oh shit, Arashi muttered. On the other side of the field Momochi Zabuza just grinned, things just got much more interesting. Hey everyone I'm still alive and kicking, just held back with school and it isn't leaving much time for writing. Also my laptop died and I have unable to get a new one but without any further delay here's the next chapter. The whole group tensed as they saw the opposing force most of the squad was rookie Genin sent forward because a battle wasn't expected but Zabuza and two Junin stood against them and if looks said anything this battle wasn't going to be easy. 
The air across the open field was so tense you could practically swing a katana through it each of the group went down in a battle stance. Suddenly one of the genin from the sound rushed forward the pressure getting to him and just as quickly a hail of kanai from Tenten brought him down, seeing the man die all hell broke loose the battle began as one chaotic mess. Tenten threw a several kanai with explosive notes into the sound area, only to see several more rain back. Flames and explosions ran through the field as dirty and smoke flew amongst the flames wounded screamed out in horror, one of the worst injured from the sound clutched his face in horror as blood ran from where an eye once was. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Itachi unleashed the burst of flame with horrifying accuracy, as the battle began to progress it was obvious that the genin never stood a chance yet they fought on in the face of mounting casualties. Elsewhere on the battlefield things heated up as Naruto and Arashi rushed towards where Zabuza was commanding his army, only stopping long enough to surprise the Junin with Horishin and cut them down with their blades. So we meet again, too bad it will be for the last time. Zabuza taunted. Yay Rig, no sooner had he begun to speak than a hail of Sanban needles flew narrowly missing him as he dodged. Shit Haku is here, Naruto swore. Naruto, go and find Haku I'll deal with him. Arashi ordered and he prepared to fight the swordsman. Naruto headed straight at Haku using Horishin to find himself in an area of the field with a small stream running through it as an ice spike shot for his head. Cursing Naruto dodged, only to take a small cut on his arm. Naruto rushed for Haku who merely dropped into his pouch grabbed a handful of Sanban and let a burst of them go. Not expecting this calm of an opponent at this range Naruto was hit in the leg slowing him down. Damn it this isn't going to end well. Arashi. The blonde Junin couldn't understand what was going so wrong for him. Zabuza was supposed to be easier than this, hell he was barely landing any hits on the man. Blades crashed once more Arashi took one hand from his blade forcing chakra into the other to hold the lock and formed a Rasengan in an instant he broke the lock and slammed the sphere of chakra into the stomach of his opponent and watched as blood flew and the other man was blow backwards into a tree. So it ends. Rest in peace Zabuza. Arashi turned to walk away but was stopped by laughter, to his horror he turned around and watched as black marks of the cursed seal spread across Zabuza's body and the gaping hole in his stomach healed and black wings spread from his back, giving him a demonic appearance. This isn't over oh legendary Yandaimi, it's only just beginning. And Zabuza charged again with increased speed and reflexes. Arashi struck again and again at Zabuza only to find that each of his sword strokes healed after a moment of pain of Zabuza and Jutsu seemed to have no effect on him as he recovered quickly. The match was slowing turning against Arashi his only saving grace at this point was the huge chakra impact Zabuza was using to maintain the state. After several minutes in a dead heat fighting Zabuza struck hard knocking Arashi back. This isn't over, and he vanished in a burst of flame. Naruto Naruto's battle was going horribly Haku was able to keep him at long range and he was on the verge of losing. Forming a Rasengan he made one last ditch effort and charged. Itachi. The smell of blood and burnt flesh was through the air on the far side of the field he could see Tenten and Tamari along with the other two ninja, Shikamaru and Ino he believed their names to be fighting the remainder of the sound force, which for the most part lay slain or mortally wounded on the bloodied earth. The battle was ending. Leaf had taken the first minor victory. He sensed Naruto's trouble by the chakra disturbance and rushed to aid his surrogate little brother. Naruto, comma, Naruto's paling body hit the ground hard the spike jamming back up through the wound, Itachi ran towards him his eyes glazed in horror. He pulled the ice free and using what little medical jutsu he had began attempting to save Naruto. The others began to arrive quickly. Arashi began to help tending Naruto's wounds and Tenten pulled his head into her lap as her tears fell on his face. Slowly Naruto began to lose the last of his color and the rising of his chest was shallower and shallower, soon he would be dead. Naruto's Mindscape Hey Fox why am I here? A tired looking Naruto asked the Kyubi. Simple, you're dying kit. What? That ice also had some kind of poison within it, a small amount melted out of the ice as it hit thus making it enter you system. My chakra has no effect and the bleeding refuses to stop, you're going to die soon kid I can only heal the bleeding for so long then my chakra runs out. Even you mate can tell this as much as she doesn't want to admit it, they all can tell you're dying. There's nothing that can be done is there? Naruto asked sadly. I'm afraid not kid, this is beyond either of our hands now. 
Suddenly the mindscape began to fill with water and grow darker rapidly. Goodbye Kit, outside world, Naruto's body shook violently as Tenten pulled him closer. Please Naruto, don't leave me, the Kunochi cried. We need to get him to Konoha, Tenten get on my back and give Naruto here. Arashi commanded and quickly the girl complied to the former Yandaimi's orders. With that Arashi took off using Horishin as fast as he could, for his own son's life was in the balance. Itachi and the others took off as fast as they could in pursuit. With Naruto, Naruto awoke in a dark castle, with a large felling of dread. When he turned he jumped back in shock as he saw the floating form of Shinigami resting at the door of the room. Well kid, you really messed up this time. Shinigami spoke. I know, Naruto replied sadly, it isn't totally lost yet, your life is still hanging to you but just so fragilely that if your father doesn't make it to Konoha within six hours you will be dead. Shinigami spoke in an almost sad tone if he could manage it. So why am I here? Surely I'm not here to watch my own demise. Naruto spoke dryly. Hardly, you are here so I can tell you what I know about the sound's leaders after seeing three of them in combat I have a fairly good idea. Well let's hear it then. First is the one you call Haku this is what I know on him. Suddenly on the wall behind Naruto writing began to form in black flames. Haku, skill level, Sanin, bloodline, same as originally when fought. Only a lethal chakra poison is added to his ice as well as less chakra needed to form ice. Cursed seal. He seems to be immortal and the kanji of his cursed seal reads servant, exactly what this means is unknown. Weapons. Sinban, ice formed into weapons. Momochi Zabuza. Skill level. Midsanin or master swordsman. Bloodline. None. Cursed seal. Unknown variant of the heavenly seal, seems to make him immortal has one weakness, unfortunately this is unknown at this time. Weapons. Sword. The last name on the list made Naruto's blood boil. Uchiha Sasuke. Skill level. Hisanin to cage. Bloodline. Mangekio Sharingan. Cursed seal. It appears as though Sasuke's seal remains the same but his strength and speed have increased exponentially. Weapons. Kanai, Shuriken. Summon contract. Snakes. So what you're telling me is that these three are near immortal? Naruto yelled. Yes and no. Yes they seem to be nearly immortal, but no they also have a weakness I just haven't been able to figure it out yet. The one called Haku seems to have had his soul sealed someplace else, perhaps the destruction of that would kill him. Zabuza would seem to have some kind of weakness but it seems he can only be killed with a blade, how we can't be sure, as for Sasuke well, he is a total mystery. What about Orochimaru himself? Unfortunately, he hasn't showed anything else his change so we have no clue on what to expect. Who is we? Kami and myself. Konoha. The hospital was pure chaos when Arashi blasted through the doors yelling for a medic within a minute tent and arrived with Tsunade who immediately along with Shizune dragged Naruto into surgery. Soon it was becoming painfully obvious that even Tsunade's best efforts were failing to save the young blonde the poison was just too rapid and too destructive for her to isolate and destroy. Tenten. Tenten felt herself pulled into her mind where she found Shinigami waiting for her. Would you do anything to save Naruto? Yes. She spoke back boldly. Even if it were to fail and cost your own life. Yes. So be it. Without warning she was thrown back into the real world just in time to see Shinigami's first impact with her stomach and she passed out from the excruciating pain. Naruto, you have a strong lover kid. Shinigami spoke. I know she is, what did you call her? Naruto wheeled around to face the god of death just in time to see Shinigami's fist in fact with his stomach as well and he vanished from the castle. As he did so a white robed figure entered the room. So how did it go? Kami asked. Very well, the two have bonded successfully. The first true soul bond in over a millennium, we both remember what happened last time. Yes, the last two defeated the demon warriors in the demonic wars and allowed the villages to become what they are today. Yes, and I fear they will need each once of determination in their souls to do this, the powers now wielded by Orochimaru is the might of those horrific warriors. But their souls are still in my possession. Yes, but their powers are loose upon the earth once more. Flashback. 
A horrific scene unfolds as ninja and samurai charge out in one last all-out battle behind them a portal in the earth with a grand black tower stood as flames billowed from the portal. Demons dressed in solid black armor charged forward slaughtering anyone, slowly through the tides began to turn, as several figures seemed to rush forward and part the army before them. They battled to the top of the tower there they stood four warriors against four in an all-out fight ensured. A mask leaving no traces of their identities and no features where visible on them at all hid each warrior's face. Ultimately they defeated the forces but at the cost of their own lives as the tower collapsed into the portal, they fell and died impacting the ground. Their bodies were taken by their kin to separate places on the globe, two in the land of fire where Konoha now stands, one to Suna, and the last was never found. Hospital Soon after Tenten had passed out and was taken to a room of her own Naruto's wound began to heal miraculously for reasons unknown to the ninja but all were grateful. Meanwhile in the villages all across the continent shinobi lined up and began to prepare for war, the next great ninja war was upon them. Needless to say, the peaceful hopes of the shinobi countries as well as the samurai armies within the lands died out, and everyone prepared for a long bloody war. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.